Is this something that actually happened to another maid? She heard a sound in the middle of the night. A sound like dripping water. At first, she thought it was raining, so she looked through the window, and there was there wasn't a cloud in the sky to hover cover the scar stars. Wow. Maybe it's a faucet, she thought. So she stepped out of her room and into the corridor. Compared to her room, it was an unearthly chilly. Wait, what? It was unearthly chilly. Okay. The maid regretted not bringing something to cover herself with. But that didn't make any sense. Normally, the temperature wasn't that much colder outside her room. Her night clothes has always been more than enough for the trip for the trip to the laboratory. Laboratory. The laboratory, I'm calling that. <laughs> Wondering what's the reason what the reason could be, she made her way towards the sound, but then she realized something. There was no faucet in the direction she was he going. Rather she was heading towards a hall. The mansion where she served had many halls, but this one was off in a far corner of the house. The least the least used hall of them all. It had a high roof but not a lot of space, so it was difficult to make good use of it. Of use. Good whatever. It also had somewhat a somewhat heavy air to it. A very curious, a very curious room. It was the kind of place you might assign someone to clean as a part of their hazing. Anyways, when the maid realized the sound was coming from that particular hall, she, as you might expect, let out an uncomfortable sigh. But they might be. That, but there might be a leak, and having noticed, she couldn't simply ignore it, you know. So, as much as she hesitated, she pushed open the doors to the hall. There was nobody there, and it didn't look like anything was leaking, either. There were no puddles or water stains anywhere to be found. But she could still hear the sound. Trip, trip getting louder and louder. Slowly stepping further into the room, looking left and then right, then left again, she searched for, for the source of the sound, coming to a stop in the center of the hall. She stood there, still quiet, and then a chilly spot on the nape of her neck. Upon the nape of her neck, okay. But hold on. Did I read that properly? Backlog. She stood, she stood there quiet. She stood there still quiet and then a chilly spot on the nape of her neck. Okay. With a low yelp, she reached back to feel her neck, but it wasn't wet. Confused, she slowly, wearily tilted her head backwards. Oh god, what? And there hung a bloody skeleton from the ceiling. Jacob. Ah! <laughs> is this a... It's a... Yeah, it's a scary story, okay. Bah! That's rich. Amazing, oh my god, you scream like a little girl. Maria. M Maria, you little... My god, you men are... Are you men or children? This is, this is my house, and I wouldn't, and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Wait, what? Whose words were those again? Sh 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 oh, wait, that was that was when he was talking to his acquaintances. Sh shut him out! You, how do you know about that? You were ease, were you eavesdropping? And another thing, I do not care for the sort of stupid fantastical tales you women love to pass around. Because they scare you. Ah, you... You've never been able to handle anything scary, Jacob. Grrr. 
Whoa, don't glare at me like that. You're gonna destroy my sides. <laughs> Jacob lost for words. So. Did you come here for the sole purpose of telling me that cheap tripe? Acting tough after the fact after the fact just makes you look like a, like twice as much of a wuss. Well, I mean, I did made, make up a good half of it, but the maid really did hear a sound in the middle of the night. And it came from the back halls of this very mansion. Did you know? They say it used to be a chapel. We did see, like, a angel. Again, I have no interest in you women's little ghost stories. Is that so? You sure you're not just scared? Maria. Well, that said, the rumors aren't completely unfounded. This is a pretty old mansion and it had been a lot of, and it and it had a lot of work done on it. Kinda feels like it barely holding itself together. Like a bill like a big old quilt with pieces from all different time periods. The back hall is one of the oldest patches. There's a huge window on the far far end and supposedly there used to be stained glass there. Stained glass on it. The angel. It was a depiction of an archangel they say. Well yeah yeah. Such a lame such a shame. Oh, I thought you said something else. I wonder when it was broken. It was broken? Alright, oh, the um, beast broke it, right? If it was still here, I bet it would be worth a fortune. Yuki, Yukimasa, right? I find it hard to believe. First of all, why would anyone put a, put a chapel inside of a mansion? You got a point, I guess. Now, how about you do some actual work instead of distracting yourself with all this nonsense? I do work, but, uh, the other maids can be a bit nasty, you know. De dealing with other women is like walking on glass. I am to blame for that. What do I say you were? Ah, don't give me that look. They're just not fond of me, simple as that. Nothing you can do about it. Is that so? Oh yeah, I was talking to the madam, and she was telling me uh, telling me you used to be quite the gentleman. You Were you perhaps actually in love back then? You sure don't act like it. So it's easy to miss, but I guess you are not made entirely out of steel. Just like when you were younger, you're still- wait, what? Do not speak of that. The past is not worth remembering, it is unnecessary. So to you, the past exists just to be cast aside. I. That's not important. You don't want me to talk about it, I won't talk about it. But your wife? Ne never mind. I'll leave you be. I have to get back to work soon, or I'll be staring down the head made arctic smile. Oh god. Uh, Alright. If the fancy strikes me, I drop by when we can trade more ghost stories. And we can trade more ghost stories. Maria. Hmm? What? No ghost stories? No, not that. I have not forgotten those days. But, no. It's I. I'll be off then. Those days. Alright. If the fancy strike you, drop by and we could trade something other than ghost stories. Haha, <laughs> what did I tell ya? 
I'll consider it. Goodbye. Ooh, this is cool. God damn it. I can't escape anything. Not even your pass. So Maria was from Jacob's pass? Okay. The white-haired girl. Ah, uh, they have grown so beautiful. Such a wonderful fragrance. The roses? The sense of roses is so calming. I wonder why that is. Would it cause any trouble if I pick one? Oh, it's you. The maid. Well, hello there. Out for a midnight stroll, are you? Quite a particular hobby. Madam. Uh, um, I kinda spend as much time as I would like outside during the day, so I end up coming out at night. Yeah, just like before. I apologize if I startle you. Oh no, not at all. Is a chilling, captivating beauty to the sight of your snow white form standing out, standing there in the moonlit garden. I would hardly. Um, what are you doing out so late? I saw a figure through the window. On the slight chance it might be a burglar, I thought my responsibility was to ensure they did not break in. It was also the middle of the night when the Grossa Severn broke into their safe. What? Grossa Severn broke into the safe? News of that spread quite far, I'm sure you would have heard of it. Oh, but it's the same story from the beginning. Of a Gamesh. I wonder if that's like a folk tale. Hold on. I'm searching it up. Give me a minute. Get you hold your horses. Gamesh. Gamash was in prison some time ago. Oh, but the Gamash, uh, their maid, wait, hold on, I lost my line. Their maid kind of seemed to get my head out of the pass. Um, do you intend to give that white rose to somebody? Yes, is it going to turn red again? I was thinking about giving it to my husband. While I expect he has little fondness for such feminine taste, the scent of flowers has truly has a truly calming effect. He might find it relaxing when he needs to res a receive to re receive from his work. A break from his work, basically. Oh, is that so? You are very kind-hearted. Speaking of white roses, the rose he meant to give you was the same shade of white. Oh, he. But when you touched it, it turned a deep shade of red. Yeah, that's from the first door. Yeah, there it is. There was but a single white rose in the garden, so he was unable to give it to you as he had wished. In its place, he had a decorative rose fashioned for you. Uh, what exactly are you referring to? Oh dear, do you not remember? Then I am to assume you have forgotten what happened to that rose accessory as well. He was unable to give it to you, to give that to you either. But at that time, because you rejected the gift. I'm not criticizing you for that decision, of course. You had a perfectly good reason for not accepting it, because Merchant made it, and his skills was recognized by or whatever. Heartbroken from having lost you, he buried a rose in this garden. 
He did. We're talking about Mel, right? Over the years, the roses in the garden withered away, and in their place grew a thick, unsightly nest of weeds. Many, many years later, that accessory was dug up by a beast, so Yukimasa, and curiously enough, it had not a speck of rust on it. A beast. Do you not remember him either? The foreign man who, through his interaction with you, almost regained his humanity. I... I'm sorry. I... I have no idea what you speak of. The only gift I re ever received from a man is my finicus with... Fin finicus wheel. <laughs> And furthermore, I have only lived in this mansion for a year. That's what you believe, but you reincarnate every era or something. While the garden was not as thriving as it is now, it was certainly not in ruins when I arrived. Because I have been taking care of it, yes. But for whatever reason, my hands alone by my hands alone, I was unable to make it into anything quite as splendid as it is now. Once you arrive and began to work on it, however, just look around. You have restored it to its former glory, to the magnificence of the flax and hair family time, the Rose Manor. I promise I am not trying to fault you for anything. Now that I think about it, it makes sense you will not remember. Though you are still you, you are different than before. Different, though not in the sense that you are wholly a wholly distinct person. Tell me, is your name exactly again? My name is... Yes, but you... But you should already know that. Again. So her name stays constant for every reincarnation. More proof that you are indeed you. Did you know that your current name is pronounced the same as the name of the person you are waiting for? Did you know that your current name is pronounced the same as the name of the person that you are waiting for? Who is she waiting for? What are you talking about? The name of the, is it me? Is the protagonist the person she's waiting for? I have met you many times, and I know of your past, of the events that transpired long, long ago. Um, I. I'm tell I'm telling you the truth. I first came to this mansion a year ago. Until the. Until then, I have never left my country, or even set foot outside my own house. We do not have any servants either. So, were then, are you saying we met? Are you saying we met? Yeah. This mansion, of course, but I am telling the truth. It was a year ago, shortly after my parents fell ill and received an offer for my marriage. I knew something had to be done. I knew it, and so I... So I... I'm telling the truth. If that is what you remember, then I do not doubt you. But I also suspect I know why you seem so flustered. There are moments when your memory seem hazy. When it seems like important details have fallen through the cracks. You need it fret. You need not you needn't fret. One day eventually you shall remember it all. One day. Ooh. What the hell is this? A white, a white rose, oh no. Did she leave this here? A flower. What does she think she's doing? 
Is he trying to abrogate me? That garden. That damn rose garden is the whole problem. The flowers serve no proper purpose but to deceive. That garden is a sign of weakness. So no, it's not. It has no place in this house. Oh, you don't know that. Approximately a week has passed since then. The white-haired girl was, as usual, spending her time in her room reading, staying inside the house. Then, Maria barged in. Madam! Madam! Oh, oh my, you're out of breath. What happened? What happened? We we have a big problem. The, the garden. The rose garden. The garden? All the roses that you put so much love and care into growing are being chopped down. We'll lose them if we don't hurry. Whoa. Is he- is he ch oh my fuck this guy. Is he sl is he destroying the rose garden? Upon hearing the news, the white-haired girl dashed from her room and towards the garden, with Maria following close behind. When she arrived, she saw a dozen or so sweaty, rugged men at work, Jacob short and J Jacob shouting out orders. The men clearly had no concept of how much a single flower was worth, was worth no concern whatsoever for their beauty. But they mercilessly, mercilessly, thoughtlessly hacked away at the shrub at, like they were not, they were not but weeds. Each flower they tore from the earth extinguish each flower they tore from the earth extinguish another of the many lives the white haired girl had put so much time and effort into tending for. J Jacob, what are you? Oh hello Murray, I didn't expect you would come here. Come with her. I didn't expect you would come with her. Why why would you Why? Why, it goes without saying. This house has no need of a garden. Damn flowers have no place here. Might as well, might as well do something worthwhile with the soil. Is he destroying it? But a miniature railroad would be better use of the space and certainly a great deal easier on the eyes. I could even get my hands on some genuine wheels. The same wheels being used on the revolutionary transcontinental railroad that you're building and funding. Ten or twenty years down the line, they will be worth a fortune. Jacob. You know how much this garden meant to me, did, don't you? Did it honestly have no place here? Flowers have a calming effect on people. They give you peace. They are not by any means worthless. So you're saying that the white rose was your passive aggressive way of telling me to calm down. Oh my god. This guy. N not at all. I, w I simply taught you. At the end of the day, you you're just using them for your own purposes to trick and deceive. Says who? <laughs> You're just coming up with this on your own. To, to you, this rose garden was nothing but... Jacob. You've gone too far, this isn't right. <laughs> gone too far. This is my mansion. What do... What I do with my property is my business. With that rose arch out of the picture, we will have much we will have a much better view. There won't be anything blocking the sun anymore any longer. Weren't you supposed to be sensitive to light? Spend too much time out there and you'll be liable to fall ill. Get back inside now, you too, Maria. Yeah, but you destroyed the rose garden. Now she's gonna get even more sick. The poor thing, though she did not say a word, she was surely thinking. Are you truly determined to rob me of my sanctuary? The worlds twiddle around in her head, unable to make the final journey to her lips. 
She stood there, looking down at her own feet as her husband marched off, and listened to the screams of the roses being reaped. After being torn down by Jacob, the garden reverted to a state of ruined desolation. Ruined desolation. A shame, after all the work that was went into restoring it to the beauty of the beauty it had under the flaxen hair family. And as Jacob has said, in its place went scraps of metal, train wheels, prototype models, and carbon rods. These items may have had value for him, but I certainly do not think it. it was worth robbing his wife of a place that made her feel comfortable, just so he could store them there. Besides, I was rather fond of the rose garden myself. The roses seem to evoke a sense of nostalgia in me, because you've been around for like, decades. As I felt as though some somewhere far beyond the edge of my memories, I had seen another garden of roses. Modest though it may have been, but I cannot remember when it was. Does that come to a surprise to you? I am quite sure there are periods of the mansion history of which I am not aware. Wait, so you don't know all of the mansion's history? But in any case, Jacob had caused so many people great pain in order to repurpose that garden for himself. And he continued to walk all over his wife's, all over his wife whenever he, she tried to do something kind for him. He would brush her off saying that does, that's not your place. He paid no mind whatsoever to the looks of dejection that the rose rose to her face each time she he rejected her. I was beginning to wonder if anything she had said about the man he had said about the man he had been a, a year earlier was actually true. And if it was true, could a person really go throughout such a drastic change of heart in such a short time? It's possible. What do you think, Master? I say that is possible, probably. I... No. I have spoken en enough about me already. Wait, what? I seem to be talking a lot about myself this time, that's good. Tell us more about yourself. But that's hardly appropriate behavior for a man. No, not, the, not your type of maid. <laughs> now, let us return to our tale. This evening, the white-haired girl sat in her room, staring sorrily at her finicus wheel. A small mirror before her, she tried spinning the paper disc. But it was just not the same as before. Her husband was not there at her side, and even more critically, there was not a smile on her face. And then she heard a faint knock on her door. Who is it? It's me, madam, it's me, Maria. May I come in? Oh, Maria. Of course, come in. What are you doing here at this time of night? Hehe, <laughs> I was just wondering how you're doing. Should I have left you alone? Oh no, oh it's no trouble at all. I'm always glad to have you. You're making me blush, madam. I got a feeling you are a little down in the dumps. So, wait, hold on. Yeah, I'm recording. Okay. A little down in the dumps, so I'm not sure. So, I'm not here because I need to be. I would just ki I just kind of end up here, I guess. Maria. Sorry, I'm not making any sense. I can be a bit of a busybody, you know. Trouble trouble with the boundaries, I guess. Never been able to fix that. No, no, I, I don't consider you interested at all. 
I cannot count on how many times your bright smile and cheerful energy have shone a light on me when things were dark. If I didn't have you, I would have given up already. Given up, oh. You seem to be... You seem to see right through me. Even now, you are exactly right. I am feeling a little dis dispirited. That garden was even a bigger life raft than I thought. Perhaps I am being overly dramatic, but the roses were almost like children to me. Oh. I, I get it. I do. You put your heart and soul into tending that garden. It was obvious how much you loved them. Of course it's gonna hurt you heard watching a bunch of men stomp all over your flowers when you care for them like your own children. Now, I know I said this once already, but you don't need to force yourself to put up with him. Really. You don't have to bend to his will just because you're a woman. You could survive without him. Anytime you want to walk away, that's your choice. I mean, sure I'll be alone if you love madam, but your happiness is more important than any of that. So, you know. Thank you, Maria. I truly do appreciate it. But I... I would still like to wait for the day I could see his warm smile once more. If you say so. Well, in that case, I guess... I uh, have to be... have to be there to back up. It will be alright where you leave everything to this holy version. I'll have a stupid grin on my face no matter how down you're feeling. <laughs> you really are the reincarnation of the Mother of God, aren't you? Oh, you, I told you it was just a joke. Hey, whatever, so hey madam, how about a dance? Wait, what? A dance at this time of night. Yep, and since it's so late, no loud music. All you get is a little whistle, courtesy of me. But, but this room is too small for her. We use the great hall. Why not it put us in everyone else's way? You would probably complain about the noise too. No need to worry. Jacob's out inspecting some factory or something today. After that, he he's got a meeting, so he'll be staying the night elsewhere. The rest of maids are in their rooms chatting away. No one will notice. Where I come from, we dance all the time. We take that eat, drink, and be merry to heart. No food or drink for us, but we absolutely can dance. Dancing is a great way to forget all your cares. I... I'm not much of a dancer. No big deal, nobody's watching. Come on, put on a little fancy perfume and let's have some... Why perfume? You're not going anywhere. I don't have any perfume though. I don't think so. You got all the right, the right ingredients, madam, but you don't try to make anything special out of them. You got so much potential, but not even a decent sized wardrobe. At the very least, you should wear some perfume. Which is why. Ta da! I brought some with me. Why? Okay. I mean, why not? The maids are in love with this stuff. It's a big hit with all the women all over the country. The base is vanilla, really, damn. And it got several other fragrances mixed in. Give it a try, it smells divine. But Maria, I... Come on, what's the harm? Yes, just a little splash on your wrist, like so. What do you think? Uh... You're right, it smells wonderful. Doesn't it? So you like it? 
Yes, very much so. Excellent. Now, off we go to the Great Hall. Are we really going to dance? You bet your butt we are. It's not, it's not healthy to uh, hold up, to be holed up in your room all day. I know you can't, can't handle a satellite, but you still gotta have some fun and move your body. Come on, let's go. Oh, Maria. Though she looked outwardly uncertain as Maria led her forward, the hand forward, hand around her wrist, hand around her wrist, the white-haired girl seemed to be enjoying herself on the inside. Having spent her life without a single friend, she never dreamed of the day she would come. Never dreamed the day would come when she would find herself being dragged through the empty halls of a dark mansion by another woman. Maria, Maria Preza seems to shine a light upon the quiet corridor. It would have been a very lonely trek without her. Maria spun around, gave an impish smirk, and then raised her pointer finger to her lips with a soft sh The sight of it causes the white haired girl to chuckle quietly. The two of them on their way to their secret private ball were like two adult were like two adolescent girls. In short order, they arrived at the Great Hall. My heart, my heart is pounding all the way here. What is it? What is there to be nervous about? It's not like you're breaking any rules. Only kids get in trouble for staying up late. Uh, you don't know that. Once you're grown up, you're responsible for yourself. Yeah, that's true. Wait, if you're responsible, uh, okay. I'm gonna shut up and just read. I will say though th that it seems rather odd for two women to dance together. Oh, if you're ha if you're having a good time, what does it matter what's between your legs? Oh my god. <laughs> Where I come from, there are dances where families lock arms in big rings and go around in circle. Are you from Italy? Are you from Mexico? So, I'm just blabbering. So who says two girls can have some fun together? I imagine you had many good mem moments with your family. Well, I don't have a family anymore. Why? What? Alright, so I'll show you how it's done. Watch carefully, cause you're up next. Uh, ah, so, uh, okay. With a wide grin on her face, Maria began to whistle softly and prance, and prancing ar across the floor with an energetic rhythm. It was not the kind of complicated dance you see at any fancy parties. The motion was simple, flowing, embellished. A folk dance. I suppose you might call it. She seemed to be improving a little bit as well. Improvising, oh. Improvising a little bit as well. But in any event, the white-haired girl was captivated. Despite being a sequence of steps anyone could have replicated, Maria breathed life into the dance. She was neither as lilated, leech, words, lilated, lilated as an acrobat, nor as light on her feet as a professional dancer. She was her own lively, beautiful self. Maria twirled in place, the skirt of her maid uniform billowing gently up around her. With a smile, she extended her hand forward, her hand forward towards the white-haired girl. She hesitated for a moment, but as if being pulled towards by some invisible force, she took Maria's hands. Hand in hand, Maria ushered the white-haired girl into her, her dance. It was just as it was just the two of them, but you could almost see the crowd forming around them. Were there other people there? Wait. There are other people stepping in, stepping up to join. There are other people there. That's that's it, madam. You're doing great. Doing great. Now lift, lift up your legs good and spin like so. This is not easy, Maria. 
I'm having trouble following along. You can do it. Look at go so far. You're a natural, madam. Oh, Maria. I won't fall for your flattery. I mean it. The whispers of the two girls, their muffled laugh, step, hop, step, step. The trusting of fabric. Many different soft sounds layer on top of one another, creating a little bubble of happiness in the center of the hall. The white haired girl's movements were a great deal clumsier than Maria, but Maria would never d disparage her for that. On the contrary, she showered her with praises. As flustered as the white haired girl appeared, I imagine she was quite pleased. Before long, the tightness in her face muscles loosened, and a smile spread across her face, spread across her lips, and she began to brighten up. See what I tell you, fun, huh? Yes, I'm quite surprised, both that I can dance and that I enjoy doing it so much. Ah, glad to hear it. They exchanged looks and both laughed. That might have been the first time I have ever seen the white-haired girl so delighted. However, because her infirmary, infirm, yeah, infirmity, infirmity, infirmary, she quickly found herself out of breath, her porcelain skin flushed red. Maria immediately stopped for a break. She could surely have continued dancing for some time yet for some time yet, but Maria was cautious consist cons cautious of the white haired girl's physical condition. Consistious of whatever that word is. She looked over at Maria regretfully. Oh my apologies, if only I had, I had more stamina. I am hardly a, a suitable partner for you, Maria. Sure you are. This is all the cheer you have, madam. So as long as you're having fun, nothing else matters. And heck, I'm enjoying myself plenty too. What do you think? Wouldn't it be nice to do this again sometimes? Whenever you're feeling down, let's dance. If you, if you really do enjoy it dancing, but a frail girl like me, then I would be glad to. Have a little bit more, have a little more confidence in yourself, madam. You're so pretty and kind-hearted. I have loads of fun when I'm with you. So you don't need to be so hard on yourself, got it? Thank you. Pleasure is mine. It is an absolute honor having the rare opportunity to see such a bright smile on your face, madam. <laughs> yeah. My apologies for keeping you out so late. I should be getting back to my room. Oh, I didn't even realize what time it was. I'm all done up for a little bit more gum flapping. You have improved my mood more than adequately. I would not want you to be tired for work tomorrow. Okay. Well, well then, let's get out of here. Yes, let's. Smiles on both of their faces, they made a way. They made it to the Great Hall. Made it to the exit of the Great Hall. However, before they reached the door, it swung open. Oh, he's back. <laughs> a man towering shadow casts the two women into darkness. His cold, bitter glare affixed on them. If I had even the faintest premonition that this might happen, I would have done anything in my power to stop the two cherry girls on their way to the hall. But I am eternally powerless. Is that eternally or eternally? What are you doing? Standing before them in the doorway was the master of the house, Jacob. Ah. Uh, I thought you would not be back until tomorrow. And how would you know that? No, forget that. Does, 
Does my staying the night elsewhere have any effect on you? You were just waiting for this opportunity, weren't you? No, she wasn't. She was pushed on by Maria. No, what what would I possibly want? Why, wh what would I possibly want you out of the house for? I'm sure you know better than anyone. Well, what's that smell? Perfume? When did you get perfume? And I, and I have to say, you seem to be having quite the time. Look at you. You're out of breath, right as a beat. I made the right decision coming back. Where the hell were you going? No, I wasn't. J Jacob, calm down, seriously. You shut it. Now you're taking this tramp side. I have told you before, you are not to leave this house without first consulting me. Or do you mean to tell me that you've forgotten? God, your ears aren't just for show. Sure, alright. They're better than that. They even throw out the parts you don't want to hear. No, I swear I was not doing anything you... Silence! I have no interest in your excuse. You are always watching from the shadows, observing, trying not to step on anyone's toes. And in the back of your mind, you are mocking me. No, I... Listen up and listen good. You are trying to step out of line again. You just try disgracing me again. You will not get away with it. For the love of God. Get back to your room now. You too, Maria. Uh, alright. God, what is this secondly sweet smell? How utterly infuriating. It takes forever to get this off me. I always thought you had at least some sense of taste. Why did he have to disparage her so? What did she do? What did she do wrong? What did he? What did she do to deserve that? She did nothing whatsoever wrong. She deserved none of the ridicule he had showered her with. However, she was not a strong-willed woman. She did not have the courage to re retort to the man yelling at her. And neither did Maria, it seemed. Without another word, they both scrambled out of the great hall, away from Jacob. The white-haired girl was painfully miserable was a painfully miserable sight to behold. The chair had cr had drained from her spirit, and a rosy hue from her now pale cheeks. She was hunched forward slightly, looking like a small, scared animal. Say, uh... I'm sorry this was my fault. Yeah, because you kind of planned all this. If I hadn't asked you to dance, and me bringing the perfume only make things worse. No, you need, you need not feel bad about anything, Maria. Everything you did was within my best interest at heart. So, don't worry. I will be fine. Uh, so, madam, I'll clear everything up. I'm really, I, I really am to blame after all. He wouldn't even give you the time of day if you tried. He's a stubborn little shit when he's mad. I'll talk to him, he's more likely to listen to me. I'll make sure he knows he was jumping to conclusions, and I'm the one who dragged you out there to dance. And also, I force you to wear the perfume. I'll clear everything up, Kate. So please, you chair up. It would be best if I could tell them, tell him myself. But yes, you're right. He would likely not listen to me. 
he rarely ever listens to me. I should be ashamed. I cannot even hold a simple conversation with my own husband. These things happen, you know. It's not easy being married in a lot of ways. Yes, yes, you're right. I apologize for having you do something so unpleasant, but I would appreciate that. Oh no, oh no, no problem, I'm happy to. No need to apologize, I got this. I'll dunk his head in cold water until he's not blowing steam from his ears anymore. I'll cool him down, I promise. And you never know, maybe he will open, he'll be open to listening. You could be back to the way you were a year ago in no time. Don't worry, I'll take care of it, madam. Be positive. You look much better with a smile on your face. Alright. Thank you. I doubt Jacob, Jacob would listen, even coming from Maria. And I imagine the white haired girl felt much the same way. However, she grabbed onto that sliver of hope. She let herself dream. She let herself believe, even just faintly, that everything will go well. Such is human nature. When uncertainty has you in its clutches, you grasp at whatever hope you can find to keep yourself afloat. That night, she did not sleep. She was afraid that even in her dreams, Jacob would be shouting at her. She felt as though her memories of a year prior were beginning to crumble away. Oh no. The next morning, Jacob stood alone in the den of the billow's table, by the billow's table. He appeared to be rather agitated. His face was twisted into a frown and his pointer finger was tapping resent restlessly against the hard surface of the table. Evidently no longer able to stay in one place, he placed a circle around the table. He paced a circle around the table. Then swipe up a rack and queue in a queue, setting up a game of nine ball. I am not intimately familiar with the ways by which men entertain themselves, but in truth I was bewitched by the sight of him leaning over the table. It almost seemed as though a steel rod had ran straight from his shoulder to the tip of his outreach finger upon which the queue, the queue was secured by another finger, looped over it. With a smooth flowing motion, he thrust the queue forward slightly, pulling it back and repeating the process once more, before ramming it into the cue ball, sending it rolling into the diamond of the colored ball. Yeah, that's how you play that game. A chorus of clicks and clacks emanated from the center of the room. Balls collided with one another and ricocheted off the cushioned walls in a few, a few landing in the pockets situated around the edge of the table. Jacob appeared to be to have accomplished this with little trouble, but I imagine merely striking the cue ball with the stick would be rather difficult for someone inexperienced. But despite this accomplishment, it seems, it seems to only exacerbate his agitation. Lousy positioning, he muttered. Though I hadn't, I hadn't the faintest idea what he was talking about. What should have been a game for his enjoyment, he went about with a constant look of exasperation. Exasperation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the word. I suspect he was using it as a way to blow off steam. 
and as a result, the tension was the tension in the air was palpable. It felt as though it felt it felt I felt it would be improper to intrude upon him, even considering my distaste for the man. There was an undeniable beauty in every motion he made. Every perfectly audible clack of the billiard balls bouncing off one of one another. It was an enchanting sight. But then someone without the slightest regard for appreci or appreciation for beauty came marching in with a hammer to shatter it like glass. Gotta say that was pretty impressive. A man lean a man I thought it was Maria. A man lean against the frame of the door door he was neither a resident nor a worker of the mansion. The man's face was covered in scraggly stubbles and his body draped draped in grime cake garments. His eyes were sunken so deep it was as though I was looking at a fleshless skull, though there was a feral glimmer in his in them. Needless to say, he was not prim and proper. How long have you been there? Tomaso Tomaso. Not long, but man I can't help laughing. You were completely in your own world there. What do you want? And why didn't you send a maid for me? Don't be such a hard ass. We we ain't strangers, man. Why should family have to go through the maids to see you? He's family. That just ain't right, brother. His brother. Your doors should always be open for family. Enough. I am not your family. Oh. They're not family. What? We're bound by something even stronger than blood. Okay, so they're not blood related. By our family, our Kosca. Costa. Costa. Costa, yeah. That's like a gang. Don't. You only ever bring up the Costa when it in when it's in your interest. Ooh, scary. Come on now. What happened to you, little Jack? Little Jack. Where the little boy who used to call me Uncle Tommy go? Don't you dare use that god for second name. Get the hell out of my sight. What in god name are you doing here? The man hailed from the same country as Jacob. They had a particular relationship, though they were not blood related. He referred to Jacob as family. They came from a sunny island in the Mediterranean. That's not Mediterranean, is it? The Mediterranean Sea. I'm not even sure that's Mediterranean. That word. Hold on, give me a minute. I'm researching. Meter. Pronunciation. Pronouns. Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean. Yeah, I was right. The Mediterranean. But why does it look so weird? The Mediterranean. They came from a sunny island in the Mediterranean Sea, a place of many unique customs and an entire underground society. Costa was a word that originated that originated from and referred to those underworld families. It would be another 30 or so years before organizations like theirs received much public attention. At the time, they were not widely known. Just a short step into the future and they would grow so powerful the very mention of them will send chills through the room. 
Hey now, that's no way to talk about your fellow Berzati. You're on, you're on the short list to become the next capo fa familia. I'm guessing that's the leader. Capo familia. We we respect our brothers. That's how we operate. I could go home and say that you threw me out of your house. How do you how do you like those rumors to spread? The soon to be Kappa Familia wouldn't even listen to all of the requests. I very much doubt anything you say said could damage my reputation. I ain't been exiled yet. And as long as I'm still one of them, they won't ignore me. Oh, that's some mighty fine looking whiskey you got there. Don't mind if I do. Nothing here is for you to drink. Whose is my lifeblood, man? No, no love for our brother. You worthless leech. It surely won't be long before you find yourself in exile. If you're lucky enough to get off the hook with just help with just exile, that is. A child could snap that scrawny neck of yours. If I'm gonna go, I'd rather go tied up, tortured for days, covered in tiny little cuts from head to toes. You sick bastard. You disgust me. Call me a carnal adventurer. I despise the mundane. The last thing I want is to go out like a wet fart. Is it is this what you came for? To waste my time with your impish in not impish inspid uh, inspitted nonsense. Oh hardly. Surely you have an idea what I'm here for and how much I need he 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 You damn maggot A worthless leech a sick bastard a damn maggot <laughs> what other names you got up your sleeve for me? You son of a... Do you honestly think th this is how you ask for a favor? Oops, excuse me. I beg of the old steam future Kappa Familia. I am bone broke, not enough money to put bread on the table. Could you spare a little for a brother? You brought us on yourself, I'm sure. I hear more than enough stories about you, and I hardly... And hardly any of them is pleasant. Drinking, gambling, debauchery. I am humiliated to be in the same Costco as you. You wanna make money... You wanna make money playing, you gotta learn the game first. Saves the worm who plays himself into oblivion. Now, do you honestly believe I give you anything? Oh, but you will. You got no choice. Costco rules you're required to help your fellow countrymen. Especially considering how few of us there are stranded on the coastal landmass. On this coastal landmass. You won't even notice the money missing. It ain't because you can't, because you don't want to. But Jacob, being a tight ass does nothing for you. Me coming to you for help to keep your good name clean. That's the thing about being a... about being boss. You quietly leap... You quietly keep little shit like me out of trouble. So that trouble don't come raining back on you. Hmm. You don't seem to understand your place. Rather than lecturing me, you should be on your hands and knees, begging and crying for my help. If that's what you want, I gladly comply. Happy to kiss your booth while I'm at it. Don't even think about it. Notice, there won't be a second time. I'll be reporting your conduct to the, 
to the family back home. I look forward to seeing how they deal with you. Here, just try to have a little mercy, will you? Hey, hey, there is there a maid around who doesn't? It doesn't matter who. The head maid, apparently. How may I serve you, master? Get a single stack from the safe, here's the key. It goes without saying, but don't touch anything else. Give the money to that man as you're escorting him out the door. As you wish. Is that all you need? Yes, now get to it. Very well, excuse me. Well, well. That's one looker of a maid you got there. But there's something, I don't know, eerie? Strange about her. Yeah, you got that right. Fancy that we agree on something. How long has she been working here? Can't tell you. As I recall, she came with a house. That's the kind of woman you fancy? A gal you can't read will always be interesting. Is that so? Now that you mention it, how old is that woman? Probably thousands of years. <laughs> Though I suppose it doesn't matter. Doesn't much matter. Oh yeah, Jacob. One other thing I wanted to talk to you talk to you about. What what is it this time? If it's more of your bladder, I will shoot you dead where you stand. Now, now, no need for threats. This is this one is about your uh, better half. What about my wife? Well, uh, to put it simply, yeah. She came to me asking for advice, looking a little distressed. My wife asks you for advice. From the sounds of it, you're pretty rough on the little lady. lady. That just ain't right, man. You managed to snag yourself a bra that pretty, you ought to treat her a little better, you, you hear? At least a little better, you hear? She looked good with a smile. You gotta make, you gotta show it, you gotta make her show it to you every once in a while. Why would she come to you about that? Don't ask me, maybe she she ain't got no no one else to talk to. And you know, for whatever it's worth, I'm a part of the same Costco. Guessing she thought I'd get through to you easier easier. That's gonna make him mad. Really you just have to put the, put a little bit more thought into how you act around her. And she'll be smiling for you like always. Oh yeah, I I got just a thing. Women love this stuff, I'm sure she'd be thrilled. It's that... perfume. Haven't you heard everybody talking about it? I'm a big fan of this stuff too, it smells great. Pretty girl smiles at you wearing some of this... some of this and any man will fall in love in an instant. You never got... you, you never given her nothing fashionable before, have you? May look like just scented water, but you can't let that fool you. Go on, give it to her. You like a nice melon lady too, don't you? A low old scent can give a different flavor to your nighttime excitement, hee hee hee. Lord, vanilla. Well, I said my piece. I'll be taking my leave. Don't want to keep your maid waiting too long and get and get a herb outside. Hold on, Thomas go. Why would she? Make it last. That's all the advice your Uncle Tommy has for you. Just... Ciao. Wait, Thomas go. Oh god. I could go after him, but I could go after him. It will be simple task to catch him, grab him by the neck and tell, make him tell me. Tell me where he spoke with her, and what she told him. But why? 
Why would my legs not move? Axing him for advice, fashionable perfume, her smile. She looks good with a smile. She'll be smiling for you like always. That can't be. She hardly ever smiles around me. But she, she'll smile for him? Sound weird, doesn't it? I mean, then again, this guy's an asshole, so. Last, last night, when she was short of breath, having such a grand time wearing that perfume, getting ready to leave the ha leave the ha oh no, just who was that smile for? He's getting the wrong idea. God damn it! Don't you think I'll let you r run free any longer? He thinks she's cheating on him. His eyebrows fear were feared, furred, creating deep creases in his forehead. Several servants stood off to the side, watching their master attentively as he stomped past them down the corridor. However, no one said a word to him. I had not been preoccupied atten attending to his countrymen. I liked. I luckily would have prevented it. The look on his face would have made it obvious that something bad was about to happen. Something that will serve only to further her misfortune. She was already in a less than ideal situation. And it was perched on the edge of a hill, soon to begin rolling down even worse into even worse territories. Territory. J Jacob, what's the matter? If you wanted to visit, you could have said something, rather than coming in without knocking. Is that really necessary? Pardon? It, is there something you so desperately want to keep from me that I must knock before entering? That I should have that I should have to let you know in advance that I'm coming. What, what are you? Well, is there? You want to talk to him behind my back, I'm told. What did you tell him? You moaned to him about my behavior. You sick ass bastard, I hate you. Yeah, that hurts. You told him I'm rough with you. You cried on his shoulder because I'm not nice enough. Well, are you seeing what you're doing right now? Of course you're not nice enough. Him, of all people. Okay, him, of all people. Yeah, that makes sense. Wait, Jacob. You're mistaken. Let me... Silence. Not a word. Not a single godforsaken word. The only thing that comes out of your mouth it is excuses. Lies. Fabrication. You put on this sweet, innocent little girl act, but what's really going on through your head? Maybe I should just rip that mask off your face. S stop, Jacob. You look down on me. Your new... Your nobility. And I'm just a nobody who married into it. Is that what you think? No. No, stop. Let, let, let go of me, please. When did this start? How long have you been seeing him? Who else have you been seeing? Covering yourself in fashionable perfume that was Maria. And smiling even though you have never smiled around me. Please, let go. Let me go. I can see it in your eyes. He's just a wordless commoner. That's your own interpretation. Why would I think that? Why will you not listen to me? Silence is all your fault. Every last thing. I tell you not to leave the house, but you do. I tell you to do as I say, but you ignore me. Every last thing you do drives me mad. I don't have t 
time right now to deal with this. To rack my mind over you, over a woman. I don't have time for it. Why do you not? Why do you not do as I say? The the the. Do you not have enough? Enough already, huh? Will you not be satisfied until you have taken even my arms and legs? I've given you money, clothing, everything. Well, you didn't give her perfume. Clothing, your closet, not even... Okay. You have an incredible life. You took away her garden. Incredible life. Look around you. That life, that life of luxury you and your parents wanted. It's right here. You have it. What more could you possibly want? Why do you insist, insist on being unfaithful? She hasn't been unfaithful. Unfaithful. You think that what I'm doing is unfaithful to you? How else should I describe it? You leave your room despite my ordering you not to. Don't you think... Don't you... Don't think I don't know. When you came to the den the other day, you had your eyes on other men. No, I did not. I had no such an inclination. Enough! Not another word from you. I have no interest in your excuses. If that's how you're gonna act, then say goodbye to your freedom. You're forbidden from leaving the mansion, or your room, for that matter. Or even speaking to the servants. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll make you a new room. Too many people come in and out of this one. It'll be somewhere quieter, out of the way. You will like you like the garden, how about I put it there? If you leave that room without my permission, this time I'll kill you, what? Why? Why will, will you not listen to me? J Jacob, the master of the house, likely loved the white-haired girl. Did he? That is what I saw in their... That's what you saw <laughs> in their exchange. Normally, love is supposed to be sweet, warm, wonderful emotion. It makes you care for, value that person even more than yourself. But it was the exact opposite for him. I never knew that love could be such a painful thing. How did his love end up so twisted? What did he expect to happen by confronting and abusing the woman he loved? Perhaps he was conscious of that. To be human is to sometimes find oneself driven by uncontrollable internal impulses. A few days later, Jacob dragged a white girl from her chamber and led her outside. The garden she had once loved now was now a thing of the past. It had become a dreary place, narrow of a rose in sight, and being taken there did nothing to improve her mood, only sadden her further. The cold gray piles of metal fleck freckling the burden of the barren earth seems to mock her. Her husband led her, led her, the lady of the house, to a shed that has been repurposed into a Spartan living area. She begged and pleaded, but Jacob would not have it. He shoved her into the sad little shack and locked the door. I'll kill you is crazy, Jacob is crazy. She did not wait. I'm just not trying to piece something together. She did not talk to anybody though. At least that's not what we see. And she even said that she did not talk to him. So who talked to Tommy, Tomasa. I feel like she's being set up. 
How? How did things end up this way? Why? All I wanted was to go back to the way things used to be. For us. To be able to smile around each other. It has been several days since Jacob had locked her in the shed. And her day-to-day -day life was only growing more adrosious. Adorous. Adorous. She was under constant surveillance. The door was only unlocked to deliver her meals three times a day. And despite what an unfortunate situation their employer's wife found herself in, the maid chattered and gossiped and giggled freely. Not even in the shadows, out of their, out of her presence, the, tack, the, the tackless young maid servants whispered directly to do. White girl one day brought her meals. Look at you, madam, caged away like cattle. I could almost hear the sounds of cattle forming in cracks, the sound of cracks forming in her heart. I imagine she had gotten to the point where she was having difficulty merely holding herself together. She had done nothing wrong, and yet she was forced to live with this life of insults and mockery. Of ridicule. The only reason her tedious, tenuously, tenuously held together the only reason her tenuously held together spirit did not completely shatter was because she still had only her one and only ally, Maria. The maid Maria volunteered to attend to the white haired girl. Maria took over the, the duties of delivering her three meals, meaning the other maids stopped coming by. And that relieved the white haired girl mental and emotional stress considerably. Maria became her sole conversation partner, her sole companion. She did not leave as soon as the white as the meals were finished, instead of remaining in the shed with the white haired girl for some time. So, uh, madam, how about a funny story? Really, Maria? I felt a pretty hard the other day. You want to hear about it? Really? So, a couple of days back, I didn't get enough sleep the previous night. The previous night, right? I'm helping out in the kitchen, half awake, plating up some food. And when I go to bring it out to the guests, my heart's about to leap out of my mouth. Guess why? What I thought was a plate was actually an ashtray. Man, I was sweating like a pig. The guests didn't seem to notice, but the other maids were pale as ghosts the entire time. <laughs> Just about everyone had themselves a case of, of the vapors. I got quite the tongue lashing at the cleanup. Pretty funny, huh? Oh, did you? Sounds like it was a pretty bad day. Hey, yeah. Hey, uh, madam. I know there's not much point in telling you to cheer up right now. But I'm sure he won't keep you locked up forever. He's just a bit crabby for now. It'll be alright. Although, I guess this is a bit drastic for a temper tantrum. I'm sorry, madam. If only I had pushed him a bit harder. If only I, ha I had a little bit more influence. You might not be in this situation. I thought it could be... I thought it could be of some help, but I guess I'm not doing a great job of that. Of course not, Maria. You absolutely are. Yes, your being here takes a great weight off my shoulders. Still though, I feel so worthless, because I'm just a maid, I can't set you free, it's okay, I'm used to being in prison, what, what, what do you mean you're used to it, you never locked, locked your door before, 
Ah. You're right. I'm not sure why, but I feel as though I have been in a similar predicament before. Lacking freedom and contract to contract with others for a start long stretch of time. You mean the girl who was locked up in the castle? From the first door? I'm sure it's simply exhaustion getting at you, madam. No one should ever be used to living like this. Yes, I agree. And I pray things go back to the way they were soon. Has getting mad at him ever crossed your mind? Getting mad. Yeah, you know, when he yells, you yell back and let him know he's in the wrong. Never consider doing that. I... I guess you're not one to get angry, madam. Which would mean you're a better fit for the Holy Mother than me. Oh no. I do... I do sometimes. I want to get angry. To tell you the truth, it's almost always going through my mind how... If I did raise my voice, perhaps he would listen to what I have to say. But when I'm standing there in front of him, and he starts shouting at me, I freeze up and end up not saying a word. I'm just such a pitiful woman. Everything about me. When I need to speak up the most, I stand up and to stand up for myself. I cannot. Oh, don't look so down. That's not a bad thing. It's just you got... It just got you in a little bit of a pickle, right? Right now. But I'll clear everything up with him, you hear? You hear me? In my mind, your modesty is a virtue. And the more I think about it, I can't even imagine you screaming. I like you better the way you are. Reserved and ladylike. You can leave all the yelling to me. I'll do whatever I can to help you, madam. Were you able to cheer up his confusion about... Cl were you able to clear up his confusion, confusion about the night we were dancing? Oh, uh, about the... Uh, sorry, he just wanted to hear it. I... I see. But I'm not throwing in a towel. I keep trying as long as it takes. So... Say, Maria. Could I perhaps ask another favor? Huh? Yeah, sure. Let me have it. I would like to write him a letter. Letter? To someone who lives in the same house? Yes. As things stand, I cannot simply go visit him on a whim. And... I feel as though I could calmly express on paper the things I'm unable to say to him face to face. I suspect I might have more luck that way. Also, I believe he would be more likely to maintain his compu composure reading my thoughts in a letter than hearing them from my mouth. With it, I can clear up all confusion, confusion and things can go back to the way they were. A letter, huh? Interesting. I'll write the letter which which I would like you to deliver to him. May I ask that of you? Absolutely not a problem. Thank you, Maria. You're the only person I can count on. And I mean that. The thing about counting on people... Why? How did this happen? Why would she betray me? I wanted to give her a decently happy life. I didn't want to get violent with her. And yet when I saw her face, when I heard what she had to say, I kind of restrained myself. I guess what it comes down to is that no matter how you dress it up, I am still a Berzati. 
There was never any way for this bloodline to give that girl happiness. God damn it. Why am I fretting over this nonsense? Now I'm supposed to be the future head of. Ha! An illusion. But they're dancing. They really are. And they look like they're having a wonderful time. Oh wait, I read this already. Are you sure it's an illusion, not something else? The, oh wait, what, I read this. Why am I reading rereading this? It works. Reach out your hands and try to grab them. You won't be able to. Oh yeah, you're right. That's a shame. Uh, I didn't think you, I didn't think you actually would. But it's the most precious thing. I look as though they're dancing atop a palm. It's almost frightening how how much innocent rests within those hands. Wait, this is new. It is as as if they're completely cut off from the world of filth. My hands, however, are soaked in blood. I fear that bringing her into my world may taint her. Am I capable of protecting this woman's purity? Oh, is that what he said? In his mind, that we didn't read. And yet, as I watch her so joyously play, I felt as though I have gotten close to her. I was the one being a child that day. Jacob, it's me, Maria. Is it alright to come in? If I come in? Ah, Maria. It's fine, come in. Alrighty. Don't let me surprise, I didn't think you'd let me in. I have never denied you access to my room. Nope. But you have been looking pretty glum lately. I never exactly been a cherry man. I had sure enough. I know you told me told me before not to talk about your wife, but I'm going to stick my nose where it doesn't belong today. There's been a lot of chatter among the maids lately about you getting rough with her. I mean, you got the poor thing locked up in a shed outside. You're not even leaving the best impression on anyone. You here to box my ears. I don't know, 50-50. The other half is I'm concerned about you. I know you're not the kind of man to threaten someone without a good reason. You're not. I thought you were friends with her. I thought you were friends with her. I am. And it hurts seeing her in so much pain. Then why has that not changed the way you act around me? I would think you would be scorning me with the rest of the maids. Oh, I see how it is. You don't trust me. And we've known each other for so long. This isn't a question of whose side I'm on. You're in pain too, I can see that. You always bottle things up, kept them hidden. You're too proud to rely on others, but you should probably vent to someone before it reaches to the point where you can no longer where you no longer can. Say, Jacob. Do you remember the promise we made a while back? How far back? Back when you were still shorter than me. You were 14, and I was 12. I had to leave town and you came to see me off. Quite frankly, I didn't think you'd come. I was surprised even if I didn't show it. Ooh, flashback. Flashback! Jacob. Where's your dad? Are you here alone? He didn't even tell me. Uh there's no there's no reason you have to leave town. My old man say the cap the camp have more power. 
I should be the one leaving. It's not that simple. Grown-ups have a lot to consider. So don't give me that look, Jacob. We were kids, but we both kind of started to catch on to the situation with our families and to the bonds that the land has held, it, held on us. Though we didn't know any of the details at the time, my grandpa, my grandpa owned all the land the city was built on, but he was very, but he was a very conservative man. He then tried to spread his influence instead, of opting to fortify what he already had. I don't know exactly when it first started, but organizations were used to an administrate cities. And when we were kids, my dad was the Kappa Familia, and my grandfather was his consulator. Yeah, I pronounced that right, consulator. But just because he was an advisor didn't mean he was powerless. While my dad made the decisions, my grandpa was the one who was the one was the only one allowed to fight him on fight him on them. Your father was a Capodicina <laughs> that served under my dad wasn't he wasn't especially happy about that. But parents quarreling doesn't affect their kids, or at least that's what I thought at the time. And what do you probably thought too? But there was a chance we could be caught in the crossfire, so my dad decided to send me and my mom away. Off the island to the north with some more prosperous areas. He thought that by sending us there we could live our own, our clean lives. Our lives, oh, we thought we could live our lives clean, regardless of where we came from. There's no changing what's in your blood, though. You could have told me. Or were you planning on leaving without saying anything? No, it was... It was just all decided so quickly. Why do you sound so accepting? Adults have a lot to consider, but have a lot to consider you may bet they do you bet they do but you could at least let them know you're opposed to it Maria but no your tail went straight between your legs as soon as you were told you just gave up and accepted it straight away I thought you were better than that you you think you think I don't know that. But I'll just be in my dad's way if I stayed. I am a kid, a girl. It wouldn't be of any help if something happened. And I don't want to need someone to protect me. I never once thought of you as a girl. Damn. Hey, now that's mean. Oh jeez, thanks, Jacob. Now you're getting me all mushy too. If anyone should be sad here, it's me. I'm not sad. Oh really? You sure? You sure are not actually torn that I won't be around anymore? You're a huge crybaby after all, Jacobino. Hey, when I when I have I ever cried? And don't call me that. Aha! I made you mad. Short fuse as ever, I see. You gotta learn to keep your head. You gotta learn to keep your head. Yeah, that's right. You're a man and the heir to the Bazati's family. Hmm, don't you lecture me. So pig headed. Pig headed. You could at least listen to me just once before I'm gone. Hey, Maria. I got, got a little time to spare? Uh, yeah, sure, but not much. The carriage is gonna 
be here soon. Do you have enough for a trip to the hill and back? Yeah, I should have time for that. That's a hill. Because of our families, we weren't really able to get along with the other kids in the city, so we played a lot up at the top of that hill. It became kind of like our little secret lair. There was an abandoned house up there, I guess an old farmhouse or something, and kids love that sort of thing, you know. We call it Casa Nor Norista, our home. Casa Norista, our home. And we pretended it was actually ours. We drew circles on the wall in chalk and used it for target practice. We brought up a bale of straw and used it to make makeshift beds. When either of us got into f got into fights with our parents, we stayed the nights here instead of home. In retrospect, I'm sure they knew where we were going and just let us do our thing. Oh yeah, there was this one time we were playing and a huge storm rolled in, trapping us there, tra trapping us up there. The wind wasn't just howling, it was screaming bloody murder. It was blowing so hard that I could, I thought the house might fly away. As I recall, you were crying that night. Hey Nero, you here to see me off too? Oh, it's a dog. Ah, uh, there you go. There you go, wagging your tail with that dumb look on your face. That's a dog for you. You have no idea what's going on, do you? It wasn't just the two of us who had made Casa Northria our home, home base, though. There was one more stray black dog. I'm pretty sure it didn't have didn't have actually black fur though, and it was just really, really dirty. Of course he doesn't. He's a stupid animal. Oh, don't talk about him like that. He's one of us. What were you planning to do about Nero? Just leave him behind. Hmm, nothing else I could do. Can't bring a dog in a carriage. Besides, you're here, so it'll be fine. You take care of Nero, right? He doesn't like me. You're the only one who can take care of him. Maybe so, but I am not coming back. He is starved to death if you don't figure something out. He's a funny runt, but I doubt he could win a fight for other scraps. Come on, do it for me. You said you won't be coming back. Do you mean that? Did you mean that? Are you absolutely never returning to this town? There is no telling what may or may not happen, so it's best not to get your hopes up. Better that than the pain of not getting not getting let down. Of getting of getting let down. Well well, I've turned into quite a Seneca. Maybe if I've been born into a more normal family, I'd be in my own room in a pile of dolls right now. Right about now. My head in the clouds. But I can't imagine I can't imagine you doing that, nor do I think that's normal. Yeah, well said. Uh, hey, stop that, Nero. Would you look at me? Ah, that tickles. And you reek. Maria. Hmm? What does it? Come back. I don't care if you don't know when it will be. Just don't say you will never return. No one knows how things are going to end up. Maybe my old man will gain more power, or maybe yours will. If things continue as they are, it will be your old man. Then, down the line, I will work in service of the Cap Campantella family. And that's just fine with me, by me. But even if that's not the future that lies ahead, I promise I will make a place for you. So, Maria. 
question. Do you have a crush on me? Wah! Kidding, I'm just kidding. No need for contemplation. Contemplation fit. What are these words? Contemplation fit. I was just playing around. Here I'm trying to have a serious conversation and then you listen to me. I don't have any of those. I don't have any of those. You know, those kinds of feelings for you. I consider you a lifelong friend. One of my own. My one and only friend, just like the white hair girl will consider her. That's why I came to see you off, and that's why I'm telling you this now. Whether you're a girl or a boy is irrelevant. Friendship lasts much longer than something so fanciful as romance. Am I wrong? Ha ha ha. Don't laugh, damn it! It's humiliating! I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing because I agree entirely. Yeah, we always been on the same page, Jacob. Maybe we did fight a lot, but there wasn't one we didn't get through. No one else understood just how lonely it was, wearing a mask for all the other kids, trying to fit into their happy little circle. We couldn't afford to be found out, after all. Neither of us had any real allies. Except for each other, of course. Nope. I'm glad I got the chance to play with you. If you hadn't been there, I probably wouldn't have been bothered. I wouldn't have bothered caring for Nero either. It was too funny watching him chase, chase you around. You're a sick girl, Maria. Haha. <laughs> so hey, Jacob. This place will still be Casanorastra Kasanor even after I leave, right? You won't do anything to it, will you? Of course not, this is our home. That was always the plan. Right, thanks. Though you know, you're being all nice is kinda creepy, Jacob. It's not gonna start snowing, is it? How rude. Ah ha ha. Well, if you're going to be like that, I'm not sure I want to give it to you. Uh, give what? A present? You just said so sooner. Gimme, gimme. You don't have a threat attack, do you? What's the ma- what's- what does matter? Come on. What you bring? Let me have it, soldier. No, oh, Maria. Consider this a temporary parting gift. You've been wanting one of these for a while. Ooh, is that a cartilage? Cartridge? Cartilage? Cartilage! From an old navy. No way! Did you swipe it? It probably catch. I'll probably catch hell for it too. Wow, wow, this is amazing. I always wanted to get my hands on the real thing. A gun? This is. F this is from the one hanging up in your house, isn't it? The one your dad was bragging about. They just started selling them this year, and it's ridiculously hard to get your hands on one, or so I hear. Man, guns from the new world are something else, oh yeah. Something else, alright. Ah, uh, just imagining the moment the hammer comes down, comes crashing down on the back of the... This sends chills down my spine. Are you sure you're a girl going crazy over a bullet cartridge? What's the big deal? I like what I like. You're getting in trouble if you don't put this back though, won't you? Don't worry. I return it when you return. And I won't tell anyone I gave it to you. Okay. Well, I guess I'll take you up on that offer then. I'll take you up on that then. Thanks, Jacob. It will be my treasure. This goes without saying, but you don't, but don't, but don't you lose it. I'm giving it to you as a symbol of our friendship. No matter how far apart we may be, or how much time may have passed, or how things play out with our families, we will always be friends. That card symbolizes symbolize that promise. It's promise, Jacob. May our 
outwardly hate may our families outwardly hate each other but I will always be your friend always be on your side and don't you ever go back on those words I swear upon this glorious cartridge and this historic land and the names of my ancestors I shall not make myself a liar I trust you Maria we will meet again it may be many years from now but that won't change a thing our friendship will never fade hmm god it was so adorable back then and short to boot but now you've hardened so much I was flabbergasted when I next saw you, saw you. Dress all fancy from head to toe. You become quite the smug little bastard, I thought. You sure weren't that little kid anymore. You have quite the memory. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't forget my promises. And I never forget... And I never forget I said I always be on your side. So you're betraying the whiter girl? The question is, did you remember? I did. I remember every word you, you said that day. And as I said, I left Casa no Nostrada as it was. I thought it was quite some distance away now. I imagined if we went back and did a little work on it, we could have have it looking good just like the old times. An arrow? He, about a year after you left, suddenly disappeared. And just for the record, I did take care of him as you told me to. I'm guessing he got in a fight with another stray or something. I searched but could never find him. Ah, uh, well. It has been more than a decade. Not everything's gonna be exactly the same. You, however, haven't changed a bit from the girl you were all those years ago. Neither have you. He's not a girl. I'm sure I'm sure you seem different on the outside, but at your core, I believe you haven't changed at all. St still the same old Jay Capino. Could you not call me that? Ha 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 ha. I've changed quite a bit, unlike you, and I'm well aware of it. Say, uh, Jacob, do you consider me supportive? Of everything you could have said, of course you are. You're constantly supporting me past and present. You're proof of the existence of a kind of friendship that can transgen transcend gender, blood, and any other such distinction. You know, it's honestly, honestly kind of bizarre seeing you without a stick up your ass. Well, harsh words. Come on now, hear me out. You almost had me blushing there. Anyways, before you put that stick back up there, tell me something. Am I still your only ally? You are. If everyone in this mansion, I am the only one. Yes. If she would at least have a little more. The madam. I didn't actually intend to treat her like that. Believe me, believe me Jacob, I know. I mean, from a girl perspective, what he did was pretty awful. But hey, I'm not a girl according to you anyways. I will. I will always be on your side no matter what. God, I feel as though I'm being consulted. Consoled. Hmm? That's what I'm going for. I should have never opened up to you. Ah ha. Ah. Hey, uh... Now it's probably not the best time to bring this up, but I have a letter. A letter? Written by the madam, here. Something suspicious. 
I have the feeling that Maria should not be trusted. She has a lot of motives to not be trusted. To betray the white haired girl. A letter from my wife. Let me see it. I'm getting a feeling, and I don't like it. What the hell am I reading? I was considering keeping it a secret, but I haven't. But having seen it, I thought hiding it from you might only hurt you more. So I decided it was best to show you. Who is this? Who is this letter for? It's as if, but that can't. I love you. Oh, never mind. I guess. I guess I was wrong. Never mind. Okay. Who is she writing this to? I don't know this man. Okay, no. Wait, what? Okay, maybe Maria could be trusted. Never mind. Take a deep breath, Jacob, and listen to me. Wait. Never mind, she can't be trusted. I was right. She 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 has motives to betray the white haired girl. From the backstory. The madam is having an affair. That's lies. Because when they told the backstory, it's almost as if she she liked Jacob. I haven't changed a bit. If you seriously believe that, then I got news for you, pal. Anyone who acts exactly the same as they did in the past is doing that. Is doing just that, acting much like. I do around you. Our friendship will never change. I was right. Ah, what a fucking joke. I knew it. I never trusted you from the beginning. Even though I kind of did trust her from the beginning, but... You know what I'm saying, I never trusted you from the beginning. You picked the, you picked the wrong girl to put your trust in. As they call you... Astute. Can you taste the fucking irony? Well, that just makes things easier for me. But my god, is it suffocating playing the good girl? That stupidly cheerful little ray of sunshine, Maria. What's your name? If Maria is not your name, then what is your name? Ugh, sickening. On the other hand, the payoff is fantastic. I can't stop. God, watching him lose control was incredible. My sides hurt just thinking about it. You're saying that you're telling me she wrote this. Who else could have been written? Could have written it. It's in her handwriting. Why? Why must she continue to betray me? She has not taken enough already. What else could she possibly want from me? I told her to stay away from my gatherings. I had those rose garden tore down. And yet still, she finds other men. I warned her, I told her, it wouldn't happen again. That if she betrayed me one more time, I'd kill her. Jacob. Out of my way, Maria. I have to talk to her. Ask her what this letter is about. Good! Talk to her. Who is this man? It's nobody. Actually, you know, that's... That's right. Go talk to her. And depending on how she answers... Holy Jacob, no. no don't listen to her, go. Holy Jacob, calm down, no. Silence, yes. How am I supposed to stay calm right now? Listen to me, relax. 
You try to talk to her now, you you aren't going to get anywhere. You're aware of just how res you are, aren't you? Besides, you think she's going to tell you the truth even if you do manage to act, of course not. She may look all prim and proper, but that's not the real her. You... traitor. I don't think she's a bad person, but... Not a bad person. The woman who wrote this letter to another man, she crossed the line, you hear me? I agree with you there, she's gone too far with this letter. But remember, she is your wife and the daughter of a noble. You know exactly what will happen if you lose control of yourself and do something to her. It's not gonna look good for you. She's, she may be nobility, but I, I have the Casca. We have our own way of taking care of these kinds of problems. Still, it's plain as day, it only makes a bigger mess. No one else knows about us yet. Are you telling me to act like nothing happened? When she so blatantly disrespects me. Jacob. Could you let me take care of it? I'm friends with the madam, you know that. She listened to me. So I make sure it gets true to her. Just how much you care about her. I couldn't ask you, it will be disgraceful. It's nothing to be ashamed of. What did I tell you? I'm on your side, and you're on mine. We're in this together. No, she's, she's not on your side. Betrayer, get out of the way. We're in this together. You can ask me things you couldn't ask others to do. I have tight... No, you don't. <laughs> I have tight lips. Anything you ask, I will keep absolutely under wraps. No. Don't trust her. Damn it. You're, no, she's not. <laughs> you're right, yes, you're right. Uh, I'm well aware that I always lose myself in her presence. If I try talking to her now, I probably will do something rash, yes. I'll probably... Make sure everything works... I'll make sure everything works out, got it? You and the madam can go back to the way things used to be, so you don't have to suffer anymore. I'll take care of it. I'm the only one who understands your pain a little bit too well. And I'm the only one who can help you out. No, you're gonna make it worse. You manipulative person, Maria. Oh, don't make that fake, Jacopino. <sighs> Thank you, Maria. Please, let her know that even if she's seeing other men, that even if she does silently mock me for not being of noble blood, that I... that I still love her. That I don't want to raise my hand against her. You love her? That's a riot. You're too busy chasing your stacks of paper. You don't have what it takes to truly love a woman. I will say though, I was surprised you lost your head that badly. Quite a little crush you got on her. You could just sit down and talk to her like a rational human being. And presto, all your problems will be solved. That's what I was trying to tell. <laughs> but you can't even manage that, which is why you're in the You stopped him from going and talking to her. You're in this predicament because you stopped him from going and talking to her. Once you're convinced of something, J Jacob, you never let go of it. And she's too timid to speak up for herself. Sorry, madam. I got nothing against you. I just didn't expect things to go quite this well. There's no stopping now. Not when I got this... This much mo What does she go exactly? This much momentum. Also, watching a pretty girl like you break down gives me goosebumps. You still convinced I'm the only person you can trust. Oh, fuck you. How did he react to the letter? Well, uh, yeah, about that. 
Would he not take take it? Oh no, he took it just um Don't feel bad about this madam, fuck you. He said he's too busy with his work. Fuck you. And tossed the letter aside, fuck you. <laughs> I told him not to to make sure he writes you a reply, but he hasn't got around to it at all. I I see. That's a shame. It kills me to see you like you know it's it sends goosebumps through you. F fuck you, madam. I don't get why he has to be so heartless. Not even taking a little bit of time out of his day to write a letter. Letter you poured your soul into writing. It's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's really is busy. He did not throw it away though, did he? I imagine he means to read it when he has more time. Madam, after everything he's done to you, you still think he means well? I have faith. My timing was poor, that's all. I believe in him. I believe the day will come when he gives me his attention again, as he did before. Adam. So, could I ask you to believe with me, Maria? N don't put the half faith that one that he will once more show me his love, and that mine will reach him. Something tells me that it will all work out if you pray for it. Yeah. Okay, if you're fine with me praying, I'll pray, you wouldn't. I get down on my knees for you, madam. Have faith. Fuck you. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck you. <laughs> I would like to write another letter. Oh no. When it's complete, I, will I could ask you to deliver it to him. I, give him I will give him as many as you want. As many as it will take. To get true to him. You really ought to learn to be you really ought to learn not to be so trusting, madam. Take a real close look. You see exactly who it is that was grounding your happy little life into the dust. Thank you, Maria. Ha ha I am the reincarnation of Mother of God. Bah! Bah! Ha! Ha! Yeah, laugh it up. Karma's is gonna come and fuck you over. Oh god, I can't hold back the laughter. I hope something bad happens to her. This is the stage of my own creation. We didn't have enough actors to playwright, so the playwright had to take on the role herself. She's doing a play, but it only adds to the excitement. Yes, this is all, all, all my masterpiece. You're just ignorant puppets dancing to my tune. From the first shot to the last, blind whose finger is sitting on the trigger. Listen to me, Jacob, and try to keep your head. I saw the man meeting with another man behind you, so from the beginning, you know the Ark in the Rose Garden? The far side out from the mansion making a perfect place to hide. I saw her back there. From the look of it, the madam is having her meetings. The one of the man who comes to your business gathering. Hey, they don't act like they're just friends. Uh, but just to be clear, I don't have any solid proof. Of course you don't. So being best if you didn't mention this to her yet, you wouldn't want to start throwing around accusation only to find out too late it was a big misunderstanding. I get to the bottom of it, so you... Uh, I think the madam might have her eyes on several men. Being a woman, you know, I could tell these things. She's giving these suggestive looks. But to whom I can't pinpoint. A lot of people come in and out of this house, after all. What, you want to keep her from leaving her room? 
Mm, that might be for the best. With so much going so well, it makes me think that even God's on my side. Damn it. They could just talk it over with one another. But they won't, and they're in deeper and deeper shit for it. You're the only one I could trust, Maria. And the timing that night, my god, it was perfect. So you set that up too. Hey, Jacob. Could I... I could just be misreading her, but something seems off about the madam. Like she's been on edge or something. I try to egg her into revealing what's going on, and she's less up that she might be going out somewhere tonight. She's not going with you, is she? Were you going out to serve a construction site today, right? Then I suggest you get that taken care of quickly. Uh, a dance? At this time- Oh, fuck you, Maria, fuck you. Even the dance was a setup. If it's too small, we do it in a hole because it's easier to see you that way. No need to worry, Jacob Levin's back in the factory because he's a dumbass and can't see the fucking liar in front of him. I thought you would not be back until tomorrow, and uh, yep. And how do you? Because Maria. No, forget that. Sing it here, you piece. Yeah. What are you out of the house for? I'm sure you know better than anyone. Yeah, he thinks he, she's cheating on him. When did you get perfume? And I have to say that you seem to be having quite the time. Look at you. You're out of breath, red as a beat. Yeah, we read all this. I'm sorry, this is all my fault. It is. Perfume made it worry, yeah. I wonder who there, what that was. Best interest at heart. She doesn't even suspect me in the slightest. To be honest, I didn't suspect her either. Until like the very last moment. Uh, and I was able to put that perfume to great use. That money second leech Tomasco showed up at the perfect time to- Oh. So she was the one who told Tomasco. I'm pretty sure that's when Jacob started getting actively violent. A jealous man is a wonderful thing, always imagining the worst and making matters worse for it. Wow, is that you, Tomasco? It's been long. What brings you here? Ooh, look you who it is. Little Miss Cappuccino. I'm pronouncing that wrong, I know. There's a surprise. I didn't expect to see you on this side of the great oblique great blue. Oh, you know, I've been giving Jacob a hand. Oh, well, call me surprise. After what happened, I wouldn't taught you or nothing to do with him. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, that was between our parents. Jacob didn't have anything to do with it. Well, would sure be nice if you all younger generation to go through life without Nothing to spark that kind of power keg. Not that it's my place to talk. No need to worry yourself about any of that. So what brings you here, Tomasco? I'm a little, uh, you know how it is. Having a bit of trouble staying afloat. Ah, I see. So you hit a beg for offerings. I'm pretty, pretty shameless, Tomasco. The point in having shame is ain't making money. Toss that out with the chamber pot. Hell, might make things easier if it, if I just put being a human all together. Are you that hard for cash? Unfortunately, numbers were supposed to go up, but for some reason they end up going down instead. Uh -huh, might be best if you kick the gambling habit. Now, now, that like telling me to go off myself. Oh my god. Yeah, I bet. So say, Tomasco, maybe I could pinch in a little bit too. Ooh, you mean it? I'd be a huge help. Uh, there's seriously not a scrap of shame in you. 
However, in exchange, I'd like you to do something for me. Tell a lie to your brother. Someone whose face needs a visit from my fist. Depending on the number, I could also possibly cut them into chunks and toss them into the ocean. Well, well, keep it, ke keep it clean. I'm not asking you to do anything like that. What is it then? Something like something a low life can me can do, like me can do. It'll be easy. And it's nothing bad either. You're going to talk to Jake, Jacob, aren't you? Well, there's something I'd like you to tell him while you're at it. You know he's merry, right? He can get a pretty nest. He can get pretty nasty with his wife, though. Is that so? Sounds like she got it rough. She does, and she religiously, she's religiously devoted to him too. I've been trying to nudge things in the right direction to get her back on good terms with him, but haven't had much luck. Ain't that something the two of them should work to? Yeah. Normally yes, but it's reached a point where I can't bear to sit back and watch it anymore. That's not. Fuck you. I don't like seeing the two of them in pain. Yes, you do. I want to do something for them. How noble. You're pretty devoted yourself, little lady. Yeah, she's devoted towards something, but we don't know what that thing is. I I'm not important right now. I'm just doing the right thing. But the thing is, Jacob won't hear a word of it. I figure maybe you, being a man, might be able to get true to him a little better than me. Mm, I doubt it he'll listen to me either, to be honest. Come on, he used to be really close though. I doubt he hates, hates you. It would, I wouldn't be too sure about that. Anywho, talking something, any, talking is something anyone could do. So what do you want me to tell him? I need you to give him a little bit of a scolding. Tell him that the madam came to you asking for advice and that she accidentally let slip that the way he's treating her day to day caused her to grief. I never met his wife. Oh, I never met his wife before, you know. It works even better that way. She's so down for it and she can't talk to anyone about it and she thought that maybe you, being a family, might be able to help. She's never met you, but she still latched on to any, to the ray of hope. And I'm sure when Jacob finds out she brought it up, she brought it up with a family, he will know that he can keep mistreating her, that fuck you. Things like this, think like this. They hit home harder than when they come from someone on the outside. You make a decent point. Yes, I'm a lady. All I can do is bring it up with him. I can't guarantee they will change nothing. That's all I need you to do. Thanks a bunch, Tomasco. Alright, here's one more thing. Hmm? This is some perfume that's grown quite popular recently. Ask him to give it to the madam as a gift. If you won't take it, you keep it. Give it to another woman, sell it, do whatever you want. Perfume, yeah. Very thoughtful of you. Women do like getting the gifts like that. Yes, we do. If Big Back Jacob give her some of that, they will be lovebirds again before you know it. I'm sure of it. He, he never thought that the day will come when I got to play Cupid. Now I'm starting to get kinda excited about this. They focused on Masco, and thanks. Also, you didn't hear any of this from me. I'm fine just pulling strings from the shadows like you always do. The relationship is in complete shambles. And Jacob still insists he fucking loves her. And the madam say she still believes in him. Yeah, seriously, how stupid can you be? Poor Jacob, poor, poor madam. Now then, let's see where this boulder rolls to next. And how far it keeps rolling. Naturally, I'll be nudging it along the way. Because after all... A life... 
A play lives or die by the director hands. So she thinks she's a director. Master, master, are you shocked? Or do you instead lament this development? I was, I was deeply sorrowful. I thought to a lesser degree about Maria's true intention and more my shameful inability to recognize her machinations. At the time, I do believe Maria was the white haired girl only. one's and only ally. It's not until everything. Wait, hold on, what I mean. That I do. Okay. It was not until everything had drawn to a close that I discovered the truth. Then I now know how the tale ends. Then I now know how the tale ends, you say. Yes, that's correct. That is correct. Well aware th that it was not the case, I told you the story the way that suggested she was on the white haired girl's side. Oh my! I wonder if that constitutes as lying. Constitutes as lying to you, master. I merely wanted to present the events in order starting from the beginning when Maria ill intention were still veiled in shadows. I wanted you to know this the same feeling of consideration consideration I had experienced. Oh A white haired girl continues to write her letter after to write letter after letter. They were all addressed to her dear husband detailing her ever persistent love for him and her desire for their relationship to return to what it had once been, my beloved. I am sure your hands are quite full right now, but that is fine. It does not change my love for you. Do you remember the day we went out together? That was perhaps the most wonderful day of my life. I had a truly incredible time. I still treasure the gift you gave, gave to me. But it is the one and only present I have received from you. That reminds me, Maria tried to teach me how to dance. I doubt I would ever progress beyond being laughlessly bad though. It would be nice if someday you and I could dance together. Perhaps when you have a little Respite, respite from work, we could go out again. Maybe take a carriage somewhere, a little further away. And we could dine at a restaurant more to your liking. Although I think the cuisine at the other restaurants was exquisite personally. I do perhaps have an unrefined palate. Maria altered the letters before delivering them, however. She changed the address from Jacob to another man. She would have cut away the top of the page with Jacob's name on it and in the space below write a different name. She could have not she could not have mimicked the white girl handwriting for the full length of the letter, but Maria could make a single name look adequately familiar. And it and it would after all be Quite difficult to notice the minor discrepancies in such a quality of quantity of text, such small quantity of text. Jacob, oh God, he's going mad again. Another letter. Why does she keep writing these? You need to see that it's for you. You need to be smart here. To Jacob's eyes, the modified letter looked like a profession profession of love for another man. The more she inscribed her feelings for Jacob, the greater the turmoil grew within his heart. Even true her love was directed toward even though her love was directed towards him, I can't. I can't believe what I am reading. 
A Rossard more to your liking. I knew it. You have been going up with other men, all the while pretending to be chastised in my presence. What? I still treasure the gift you gave me, for God's sake. You have to be fucking kidding me. Yeah. But I've ensured she can't leave that room. Yeah, think about it. She never she never see this man again. How could she see somebody when she never left that room? Think, just think for a minute. In time she'll let go, and so will he. Ah, listen to me, resigning myself to hope that everything will fix itself. How did I end up like this? Yeah, you should probably go talk to her. Such a pitiful man I've become. On the surface, Maria acted quite heartbroken at the sight of their suffering. But when she returned to her room, the walls echoed with her crackle, cackles. She delivered a great deal of entertainment from... She derived a great deal of entertainment from their squirming. The more they ride in anguish, the deeper her sat satisfaction grew. Uh, and both the white haired girl and Jacob continued to place their confidence in Maria, the one responsible for everything. The white haired girl has never possessed a sense of distrust, and so she took everything Maria says as truth, continuing in her agony to write Jacob letters. Letter after letter after letter. My beloved, are you still tied up with your work? It's been some time since we last saw one another. I n so I know not what you have been doing of late. I only hope you remain in good health. Aww. I would, if possible, prefer to tell you everything in person, but I do not have the courage. So these letters are my only option. I am adequately expressing my feelings, my love for you. If you have the time, I would appreciate a response. You're never gonna get a response though. Not as long as I'm intercepting them. There's no way I'm allowing these or your love to get to him. You're a dumbass. But I can't blame him. I, I could just stop reading them. It would certainly make things easier. But if I don't, my imagination will run wild. Fantasizing about her writing to th this other man and what she might be putting in her correspondence. I'd be better off knowing the truth than torturing myself with fantasy. It's the better option. Jacob accepts every letter Maria delivered without fail. He would merely nod as he accepted, his face contorted in discomfort and then pour over the text when he was alone. I'm assuming he did not want her to see his heart sinking into darkness. Had he put his trust in his wife rather than Maria, he would have almost certainly been able to realize the letters were directed f at him, despite the altered recipient's name. Everything she wrote about concerned him after all. How could someone who have lived and isolated a life as her have so many identical experiences with two distinct men? Why could he not find it in himself to trust her? Perhaps doubting her was simply easier. If you were in his position, would you trust her? Would you maintain faith in her, the woman who had waited so long? Would you believe the feelings she professed for you were genuine? She continued writing the letters day after day, the week after week, without hiatus. She had, by and large, run out of things to say, but that did not put an end to her letter writing. She simply repeated what she had written before. Nevertheless, they did not see one another in person. The white-haired girl, 
forbidden from leaving her shed, could only wait for her husband to pay her a visit. My beloved, there's a little bit of fog out today. Weather like this reminds me of my home country. I was born on an island perpetually covered with thick fog. With a thick fog. I'm not gonna say. I'm not saying I would like to return, but thinking about it does make me feel rather homesick. Does that happen to you? That reminds me. Aside from that one time, you have not told me much of your homeland. It would be nice if we could pay it a visit together sometimes. Speaking of which, before I left, an, is an exhibition of some sort was held there. I was unable to attend, but perhaps you had the chance when it was near you. I imagine you would have with your interest in new technology. He has to get that one. Next time you have a chance, I would enjoy hearing what they had on display. An exhibition? Ah, that's right, there was one. It was a year ago. It got, it got a quite a bit of attention since it was supposed to, to have been held in Paris. I was busy preparing for our wedding. I had no time to attend an exhibition. And while I was doing that, giving you a woman that I have never met before my full attention. You are giving yours to a different man. Oh my god, you're so dumb. Has this been going on for that long? It was you, dumbass, but okay. He has simply stepped up and taken action. He could not... He could have put an end to the stream of letters, each of which give rise to further misunderstanding. He needed merely ask the white-haired girl in person to whom the letters were addressed, rather what they describe were true and the twisted threads of his confusion would have all been unraveled. But he made no such effort, relying, relying instead on Maria to serve as his Im intermediary. I feel as though I have now, at long past, come to understand what kind of man Jacob was. While he had a great deal of pride in his capabilities, he had far less confidence in himself as a person. If he had faith in himself, perhaps he could have put faith in his wife as well. Had his pride not been so twisted, perhaps he would not have been so afraid of being hurt. Indeed, he was afraid. Afraid of being rejected by her. Afraid to face a reality where his beloved partner scored him. Where the woman he loved laughed at him disdainfully. Where she and countless others mocked him. Though of it, the thought of it paralyzed him. The environment in which he had been raised played a significant part in this state of mind, I, ex I expect. Occasionally the name on the letter would change. Mer Maria was making the white-haired girl out to be having affairs with multiple other men. She could have never done such a thing, of course, because she was in a fucking shed. But Jacob, thinking Maria to be his only ally, believed everything she said. If I could figure out who this man is, where he resides, I can make him tell me everything, ev every last detail about his relation with my wife. But what if that information went public as a result? If news of her infidelity spread and were to reach the Koska? Jacob's father. The fate of the Berezatis is in your hands, son. There's a limit to what we can accomplish in this tiny island, on this tiny island. If we don't turn our attention outwards, we will wither away and die. And not just this family, this whole land will find itself famished and emancipated, defenseless against the invasion as we waste away. 
I, I won't stand by and watch my homeland crumble. Sure, our methods may be cruel, crude, and not always worthy of praise, but they produce undeniable results. The unfortunate thing is, the previous Kappa Familia was an incredibly recent man. Am I reading the right recent man? It took all he had to merely preserve this small chunk of the world. But I am not like that, and neither are you. The most I can do is to lay the foundation to make it easier for you to work, which means everything rests on your shoulders. Both the future of the Berzati family and the future of this country, it all falls on you. The marriage is happening too quickly. It would be madness not to hurry, given the circumstances. You should be well aware of that. We need the Barazati's name climbing the social ladder in short order, or we're going to have everything rip out from under us. If the woman isn't to your liking, you can find another one that is. She is only going to be your wife in name. Listen to me, son. You must not allow her to fool around. What are, what are the most vital things to you have in your in our society? Money, power, yes, those are important. But what matters the most is respect. No one's going to follow a Kappa Familia they can't respect. They're trying to undermine your authority. Once someone deems you weaker than them, the courtesy goes out the window, and that that's a judgment that's near impossible to overturn. Betrayal spreads like fire through a forest, and once that flame lit, the boat of us come crashing down. You must not let anyone look down on you. You must not let anyone think you are the kind of man a woman can walk all over. If by any chance, your fian your finance, your f I pronounce finance, why can't I pronounce that right? Oh my god! Fin wow, finance. Your wife is ever unfaithful to you. Kill her before anyone finds out. Your place is above others. Climb to the top. Never be content with someone above you. And never forget the weights you carry on your shoulders. Fina financing. This is your responsibility. The fate of the bear is locked in your hands. Kill anyone who stands your way. Aim for the top. Open the about to develop to this country. Do respect, responsibility, responsibility, responsibility. Power is a thought. Well, there, there. <laughs> I must keep intercepting her letters. I must keep her locked up. I still have work to do. Finance. That's a word. I'm still stuck on that. I cannot allow anyone to learn about how she's disgraced me. Kill her. That's how my old man says to handle it. That's the last resort. It's not. Not yet. Ah. Uh, God damn it! It's downright wrong for me to even be having these feelings for someone. Fuck. Maid, servant, master, your carriage is waiting outside. How are you coming along? Come along. Oh, that's right. I had an inspection scheduled today. I'll be right out. Have him wait. Is something the matter, master? You look a little hazy. I'm fine. If you're not feeling well, you should stay... I said I'm fine. It's not your job to try to interfere with my condition. Y yes, sir. 
Damn it. Keep it under wraps. Act like normal. You can at least do that much, damn you. Take care on your trip, master. Yeah. It's not the usual coachman. I also feel like I've seen him somewhere. Coachman, your fault. What? That we... Hey, speak up! Die, Jacob Berzati! Oh, an assassin. Urgh, wait, is he dying? Is this where he dies? Master. There's a knife in your stomach. Oh, he's gonna die. Coachman. Oh god. Someone. Anyone. Yeah, silence. Don't make a scene. Call a doctor. I yes, sir. Y yeah. I now remember where I've seen him before. That's right. I put his factory out of business. I needed it f out of the picture to expand my own business. Uh, I guess he held a grudge about that. I should have been more careful. Blood flows with surprising abundance from the stab wound. Uh, it's not stopping either, son of a bitch. The world is going white. He's dying. Well, wait, this is how the story ends? Come on now. You have to be kidding. Oh, this is how the story ends. That's not a good ending. I know very well. What kind of man you are. You wouldn't hesitate. To lead a blind man off a cliff. If it furthered your own goals, you make money off of others' living, other, others' lives. You stand upon a mountain of corpses, cackling at everyone below you. For a man like you, love comes as naturally as flying. Guess what? You don't have any emotions. And you never have. You've always been this way. Uh, is this the house that's all? Th that's the same line of dialogue from the Beast era. Was the house talking to him? My childhood. Was the day after day? Was day after day mock of mockery? You're just a bunch of. Nobody's trying to pretend your name mean anything. They would say snaring and glaring. Maria treated me as an equal, but she was the only one. I wanted to show them up. And to do that, I had to rise to the top. Or at least high enough that I could laugh at them. My old man wasn't the only one who wanted that. I did too. I had to make them acknowledge that I had value as a man who actually wanted to go through the life being who actually wanted to go through life being laughed at. I had to make them recognize. Wait, did I skip something? I thought nope. I had to make them recognize that what I did that what I did had value and I needed either neither love or compassion to do it or that's what I thought oh the white haired girl very close in the beginning I only ever intended to use that woman I simply needed her to build a name for myself when she served her purpose, I could simply cast her aside. That's what I taught. Or rather, that's what I endeared for, endeavored to make myself think. But deep down, I felt bad for her. 
I pity this woman who was being made to marry a man she had never met before. I'm sure what she really wanted was to have a regular marriage with someone she loved. But because her family wanted to cling to their name, she wasn't afforded that opportunity. I wanted to do something for her. I didn't have, it didn't have to be anything grand. I generally wanted that. The day of our wedding was when I first saw her. Her face, partially obscured behind the veil, was gorgeous. And crucially, she was smiling at me. I had expected to find only gloom and disponsonary in her eyes. Did I pronounce that right? Disponsonary? Despondency in her eyes. But instead, she smiled. The moment I saw that smile, I wanted to be a permanent part of my life. I truly did want to ensure she always had a smile on her face. Me. This is my room. Okay, so he's not dead. Am I alive? I'm alive. Damn, uh, I feel nauseous. What time is it? The world is a blur. So hot. You mustn't get up. The white haired girl? What? The doctor said bacteria will enter your body through the womb. Because of that, you have a very high fever. What are you doing here? I was told you have been badly wounded. But thankfully, it was not fatal. How did you make it out? Yeah, that's a good question. Pardon? Wait, what? Oh, I see. Maria opened it. Would you like some medicine to reduce your fever? It should help you feel better. Yes. N no. Stay by my side for a little longer. There's anything... Is there anything I can do for you? You can ask me anything. My hand. Your hand. Could you hold my hand? If you don't want to, that's fine. Like this. Your hand is quite cold. It probably feels that way because of your fever. No, it's because... eh. I mean, I will assume that her hand is cold, but... Mm. Uh. So, um... Yes. I've done some regret- I have done some regrettable things to you. Please forgive me. Hey! That's all it take. To tell you the truth, from the moment I first saw you, I... I... Felt like you were... What I've been searching for my whole life. Laugh if you like. I felt like I have finally found you. But I couldn't act around you the way I honestly felt. You should get some sleep. Could you keep holding my hand? Until I fall asleep. If you want to, that's fine. My hand is in yours. Thank you. You appear to be quite del- Oh, it was her. Of course it was. Wait, what? I didn't read that. Wait, 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 I didn't read that. Okay. You appear to be quite delirious, Master. There was other thing you should be telling your wife, not me. It 
it was all a dream. Of course it was. It wouldn't be that easy. And she would never come to my room. She involved, she's involved with other men, oh my god. Jacob, may I come in? Oh, Maria, fuck you. I have, um, another letter. Hey, no music this time. That's weird. The white-haired girl's persistent letters did not improve anything, but simply stalked the flames of misunderstanding. The this continued for several months, though outside the sun shone with gentle, with the gentle warmth of spring. The cold, bitter winds of winter still resentfully blew between Jacob and his wife. Not allowed to leave her shed and never receiving a reply to her letters, the white girl was on only source of information was Maria. Week after week, her circumstances remained the same, but something else was beginning to show signs of change. Her mental state, oh yeah, I would that her mental state wouldn't be great. It's pointless, madam. Yeah, you would know. <laughs> you are only wasted your time would at this point. I saw him throw your letter into oh, so now he threw it away. Yeah. That that's the story you're weaving. He's he's not going to read anything you write, no matter how much of your soul you pour into it. He cares more about money than work, money and work than love. That's true. That's the kind of man he is. That is true. Wait, no, it's not. Just give up and file for a divorce, or that's what she wants. She's been saying that from the beginning. No, no. I will get true to him. Everything will go back to normal. I have faith. All my letters may go up in flames, but my fate will not be lost with them. As long as I keep writing, eventually I'll get true to him. So I cannot stop, I cannot. Do you have any idea what he's saying about you, madam? Oh, you freaking. Jacob doesn't trust you in the slightest. That's because of you. He goes around calling you a way. A man eating devil woman. There's that word again, witch. It's awful. There's no one as pure and beautiful as you. He says, I'm a witch. Listen to me, madam. He never for a second actually love uh, fuck you. <laughs> actually love you. He just wanted the influence attached to your name. Wanted to m mingle with the upper class. He used you. But last year, we went out together. He gave me a fenestrate wheel at the photography shop. He had the owner made it especially for me. He was just trying to win your favor. If he really cared for you, he wouldn't have gotten... Wouldn't he have gotten you a... He wouldn't have gotten you a paper toy. Uh, you don't know that. He would have gotten you something like a ring, or a necklace, or a perfume, or a nice dress. Something women really like. He has ever... Has he ever given you anything like that? I... He... He doesn't have any feelings for me. Uh, I'm sorry, you... Fuck you. I honestly can stand to see you going through this, but I don't know when to shut my fat trap. Yeah, apparently you don't. I went too far. The last thing I need to be doing is hurting you worse. 
No, you enjoy it, you fucking sadist. You know, for everything I've said, your unwavering dedication really is impressive, madam. Oh, that's honesty there. I know I've su suggested you get a divorce, but to be honest, a part of me kind of doesn't actually want you to split up because you get more enjoyment out of it. Despite knowing you will stay with him, it's just causing you pain. You made it this far. I like to see you make it all the way. Maybe he actually will start paying attention. Your sweetness can melt even his steel of heart. Yes. Yes, you're right. I will keep waiting. Keep writing. And I will not divorce him. Yeah. Yeah, alright. So please keep delivering my letters to him. You're my only remaining connection to the outside world. Oh yes, one more thing. If it's not too much trouble, could you tell me how he has been? What he has been doing lately? I do not have much else to write about. So if I could at least relieve him of some of his work-related stress. I am his wife, after all. I should be able to do that much for him. I am his wife. Her dedication to him was perhaps closer to an obsession. But she did not seem to be cautious of the fact that her obsession was killing her. She was visibly losing weight and her spirit was breaking down. It is said that emotion fades with time but the opposite can also be true. The act of waiting, of feverishly believing for so many months despite the object of one's affection not returning them, can tear apart a person's heart, crush their soul, shatter their spirit. No matter how radiant, how thick-skinned they may be, with enough time it will wear anyone down. No one is immune. It's pointless, Jacob. Wait all you want, you won't get her back. If she's going to be writing letters, she could at least write one for you. Yeah, it did fuck you. That all, all of them were for him. Fuck you. She looks so pure and pretty as an angel, but God Almighty, is that only how she looks? Fuck you. You changed a bit. What have I? The oh, you will be yelling and screaming, chomping at the bit to go storming on in on the madam. Now you just go quiet. I'm just a little tired. You could work it off then. What? You could already make a name for yourself in high society. Nobody's gonna suddenly start ignoring you. You're more than... You've more than put her family name to good use. To put it in your own words, it's no longer necessary. This time... This isn't something I really want to say. But the madam has never loved... Uh, you always use some of these. She was married off to a total stranger and forced to leave her home. I'm sure she felt very alone. And so she sought the companionship of other men. Why would she sought the companionship of other men? That makes no sense. Anyone who has who wasn't you probably seemed quite attractive to her. That makes no sense. Still doesn't make sense. So without getting violent or threatening to kill her or anything. Okay, that kinda of makes sense. Just end it already, quietly and without a fuss. It'll be easier for you that way. I... I cannot. Because you still love her. That's wonderful, Jacob. After everything, you still love her. That's just blind, slavish devotion at this point. Perhaps it's foolish, unhealthy. 
is a foolish, unhealthy obsession, but I still do not wish to sever ties with her. I cannot get the image of her smile out of my head. The look of utter elation on her face as she looks through the phenoscope. Phenoscope, the phenoscope wheel. Those captivating eyes beneath the veil at our wedding. I will never, for as long as I live, forget those sights. Call me surprise. You're a sentimental one. Well, I guess you always have been kind of mushy, haven't you? Truth your heart, despite how you may look. I. That's not a bad thing, though, in my book. There's nothing but pain in it for you now. But all you can do is wait until she stops writing. But don't worry, if you need to let up some steam, I'm all ears. I'll be here if you, for you until she breaks off with the other men. No, that will not be necessary. What? I know very well that things cannot continue on as they are forever. I knew it from the beginning and still couldn't do anything. This time, I'm planning to face her myself. Good. You serious, Jacob? Yes. Yes. I've relied on you for too good. For too long. I was afraid of what I might do to her. I didn't want anyone to find out that my wife was being unfaithful. And I thought the best way to ensure that was by locking her up locking up locking her away from everyone else. But the situation is not gonna improve unless I do something. If I allow things to continue as they are, sooner or later the words of her infidelity will leak. So before that happens, I must face her myself. I must do something. It's it's probably the best if you didn't Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, shut up. Uh, tell her everything, anything you want. Make sure things start improving. Shut up. I appreciate everything you've done. And I apologize for getting you involved in our troubles. But I'm going to end this now. End it now. No, I must put an end to it now. This is a problem between me and her. You might get violent again if you go see her face to face. Shut up. Yes, I might. I might do something that would look rather bad for me. But it reached a point where... It until the two of us face up to each other, it is never going to go away. It took me far too long. I wasted too much time trying to find my resolve. I... I see. You need a way to break the ice then. Break the ice. Right. If you got some convenient excuse to talk to her, I would, it will reduce some tension and make it easier to bring up what you need to bring up, right? Shut up, Maria. Here's an idea. That transcontinental railroad you've been funding. That's supposed to be opening pretty soon, isn't it? Y yes, it is. There'll be a message by the telegraph when it happens, right? You can ask her to be there to hear it. Then you can invite her to ride the f first train. You put your heart and soul into this project and it's finally being realized. It's going to be an amazing day for you, and a day like that ripes for more good things to happen. It's, go it's going to be the accomplishment of a lifetime. Don't look so down in the dumps. You're sending a trace across this massive continent, carrying on them people of this country's dream. The peoples of this country dream. Who say you can't stick a dream of your own on it too? Right. Yes, you have a point. No, she doesn't. D ignore her. A railroad that spans from coast to coast. She's a sickly girl which m makes long tricks difficult. But this new rail system should make them much less straining. It will allow me to show her the new world. The world. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Fuck you. I'm getting excited, my leave. Fuck you. You'll go great. I'm sure of it. Shut up. 
Yeah. This is another ploy. Oh my god. He's finally going to speak to her. What are you laughing about? Oh god, my fucking sides. Seriously, they're god they're a goddamn riot the both of them. They keep on trusting me and keep on getting hurt. They don't have to be going through any of this. Oh my god, Maria, you're terrible. And these people call me their the holy mother. I bet the real Mary's rolling in her fucking grave. Ha 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 ha. Now I must say I wasn't expecting you to make the a move, Jacob. A shame that the squirming loser paralyzed by insecurity is a better role for you. If they do end up figuring it out, tough shit. It doesn't hurt anything, just just takes away a bit of my fun. I don't understand why he's so infatuated with this railroad. I mean, I do sort of get the romanticizing steel, but my kind of steel is a little smaller scale. A gun. Anyways, I suppose it's about time to get things moving. Hehehe. <laughs> No matter how this plays out, you will not have a happy ending, Jacob. You're going to get a real taste of just how much I despise you. Maria, Maria! Oh, there you are. What is it? I'm on break now. You were assigned to clean the cellar today, weren't you? Well, the head made is saying it hasn't been done yet. Why? Well, I did it. I cleaned it. Just casual once over, but hey. Just a casual once over, but hey. Well, do it again, and do it right this time. Cause if you don't, it's gonna fall on me. And that's supposed to be- It's supposed to make me give a damn. I mean it. You take care of it. And you get enough special treatment as it is. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I heard you the first time. I'll take care of it. And don't you forget! Oh, for God's sake, why did it, Why should I have to be the one to tell her? Is she gone? Oh, what a pain. Who cares if the damn cellar is, is clean? Not like anyone bring guests down there. Yeesh. I guess I should take care of it. Better than a tongue lashing by the head maid. God, why did I have to be a maid anyways? What a dang place! <laughs> uh, it's so dark and humid down here. It makes me feel gross. Ah. Hmm? Someone down here? Hello? Hello, is anyone in there? There's somebody. Is the beast there? It came from further in. Is the beast there? Whoa, it's seriously dusty back there. Who was supposed to clean this last week? Well, clean the whole thing next time, damn it. Just makes my job harder. God, God, disgusting. Yeah, damn cobwebs. Oh god, oh dear god. I do not want to clean this. Ow, ow, oh for god's sake, sack this stuff properly. I gotta fix this whole mess. Uh, for the love of... Hmm? What's this? Something carved into the floor. Say what? Never noticed this before. Someone get bored one day. Hmm. What do we have here? Uh, it's mostly illegible. Let's see. It's not written in English, but my native language? But it's not modern, it's really archaic. Why on earth will someone from an old form of my country language be carved into the floor of a mansion built here in the New World? Most of it is illegible, but I can make up one section. Our lives. 
Our lives shall be forfeited to the witch's curse. Nevertheless, we must lay bare those with sin upon their souls for the redemption of those whom are pure. Should he mean not to dispel your curse, we implore of you, O witch, to mark it with only their bloodlines, the blood of the sinners. Flow through those who dwelt within this house, but not I. What in the a witch? Ah, that's crazy. White haired girl. That's crazy, but why does the handwriting look like mine? It's just coincidentally similar. No one's handwriting is perfectly unique after all. You sure? You haven't been sleepwalking, have you? Why am I so sweaty? It's not, so, it's not that hot down here. Uh, nope, forget. I didn't see anything. Not a chance it's real. It just tastes like a prank. This is silly. You sure you haven't been sleepwalking? There's something in this box. Is that a painting that has always been here? Has that always been here? Huh? White hair, fair skin, and... Is this the madam? But then... Why is the face all torn up? And the clothes, they look really old fashioned. The painting seems worn and faded too. Oh, is this um, Nellie's painting in her room? From door one. Something about it feels off. I'm not sure how to describe it, it's very... creepy. Unsettling. Writing on the floor and this painting. What's with this house? It's just a painting. Nothing to get weird out over. Ah. Uh, I bet I know what happened. Jacob probably slashed it up in a fit of. No, it was Nelly from a different time period, but you know. He's a simple man. Seeing this probably wouldn't put him in the best of mood. In the best mood. <laughs> White haired girl. What was that? Um, is someone there? The door is open. Nobody's there. What is this? A painting? Who could have left it here? Is that... me? Why, but... M my face, it's been cut. No. Why would someone have painted this? Just to do this? Who... would... Who would have done such a thing? Who would do such a thing? Oh, uh, she kind of think. You're like a witch, my dear. Like a demon. Your very presence brings misfortune upon others. You're cursed. N n no, I'm n not. I, 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 I'm not. Was it you, Jacob? Did you? Did you have this painted so you could destroy it? Do you really despise me to that extent? Why? Why do you? What? What did I ever do to make you hate me so? Why? Why? Ah. Uh, I, 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 all I'm doing is waiting for you. You worthless tramp. Are those heirs only for show? This house has no need of a garden. 
I always thought you had at least some sense of taste. Silence, it's all your fault, every last thing. Then say goodbye to your freedom. I'll kill you. Does the mere act of waiting impose upon you? Does my mere presence pervert you? Would it be better if I were gone? Would it be better if I left this mansion? If I left you, I don't think I could wait much longer. There's no end in sight. I can't take it any. There's no end. No. I will set a deadline for when I give up waiting. When the pr project you pour your heart and soul into is complete. When the real world opens, I will be finished waiting. And then it's over. Damn, that's when he's also coming to talk to her. The Pacific Railroad. Last spike ceremony was drawing nearer by the day. That day was coincidentally the deadline the two of them had set for themselves. Jacob to confront his wife and the white haired girl to wait for him. And as that day approached, she continued to write letters. She wrote the letters purely by force of habit, despite having been worn vis visibly thin. I expect that she could not stop. The act of writing was all that kept her from going mad. By focusing her attention on another person through their letters, she was able to maintain her grip on herself. But that day would put an end to her suffering and despair. When the railroad was complete, all the misunderstandings will be clear up and Maria is going to get fucked. They would return to the smiling happy couple they had been when they were first married. The harsh winter would finally come to a close, melting away into the past and allowing them to step into the future. With constant prayer in my heart, I impatiently waited for the railroad opening ceremony. I do not, after all, wish for anyone to fall into any kind of misfortune. And that goes for you as well, Master. Now, Master. The door is soon to be shut upon this era. Are you prepared to see what happens next? Yes. I see. Why she responded to me? Oh my god. I see. Very well. Then allow me... Then allow us to make our way to that final day. See with your own eyes, Master, how this tale concludes. And please, do not let go of my hand. Oh, he's finally going to do something. The night before the opening ceremony, the master of the house headed f for his wife's shed. There was a tension on his face, but surely, but a sure surety in his step. He had found a resolve to speak with her. Having locked her away for so long in the shed like a common prisoner, Jacob was hardly optimistic about what she might say to him. He had undeniably mistreated her, said heartless and cruel things to her, and even got gotten physically violent with her. His cautious actions were inexcusable. His actions were inexcusable even if they were in response to her infidelity. Of course, the very infidelity which had driven him to such behavior had not, in fact, taken place, but he was unaware of that. So you can't blame him? I can still blame him. There was a chance they would never reconcile their misunderstandings, and that is predic predicated. That is a predicament would not, and this predicament would not have a pro positive resolution. But he still clung to any tiny fragments of hope. He wanted to start over with the white-haired girl to make a new future with her. 
With that desire burning strong in his heart, he stood before the door to her shed and called out to her. Are you awake? It's me, Jacob. May I come in? She's gone. I won't hurt you. I will not raise my hand against you again. I swear to you I w will do you no harm. Ju I just wish to speak. I would like to have a calm, rational conversation. And as such, I will not enter your room until you have give me, given me your permission. She is not there, dude. So may I please come in? You won't even give me a response. Alright. Considering how you must feel about me, I, I shouldn't be surprised. Fine then. You don't have to let me in. But please at least hear me out. You remember the day, shortly after we first met. We went on our honeymoon. If you can even recall call the little walk we took a honeymoon. I was unable to do anything nice for you then, either. I had no experience, no idea how to interact with an upperclassman woman like you. I didn't know what I should do for you. And yes, I know that makes me sound juvenile. I have a tendency to do things I don't mean, the more perturbed I get. I'm sure I said things to hurt you numerous times that day. However, at the photo photographer shop, when you saw the phenoscope, you smiled for me. I was, I was generally pleased in that moment. I felt like I had gotten closer to you. I very much, I very much doubt that was actually an appropriate present for a noble woman like yourself. Jewels or flowers or something like that would. Something beautiful would have certainly suited you better. And I knew that, but assume you would have been given the gifts like that countless times in the past. You are, after all, a beautiful woman. I did not want to have to compete on the same field as those other men. I wanted to be special, no, I wanted to be unique to you. No one had ever shown you anything of the sort before, had they? Frankly, I wasn't sure if a woman of your status would even take any interest in a phenoscope at all. I imagine you've thrown it up, thrown it out by now, but I chose to believe you sincerely liked it on that day. That, if for a moment, I caught your eye. Even if you started seeing other men afterwards, that moment was real, wasn't it? Our, our marriage w was, at its core, nothing but an arrangement between our parents. An exchange of money and influence. That was how it began, but... But that day, I... I love you. I yearn to see you, you smile, as if I had loved you my entire life. The Pacific Railroad has finally been completed. That's the project I've been funding. Everyone thought it was crazy, but a railroad now stretches across the breadth of this country. A joining ceremony will be held tomorrow. It's going to be a grand event. Locally, they, they're planning on doing a gun salute, and the sound of the last spike being driven into the ground will be transmitted across the country via telegraph. I have procured a telegraph so we can listen to it here in the mansion. In your condition, you would probably have trouble handling the crowds at the telegraph station. But here you could celebrate in the comfort of your own home. I suppose what I'm saying is, I want to celebrate this with you. I have made arrangements to make that possible for you, because I wish to have you there with me. Would you be willing, tomorrow, to celebrate the completion of the Pacific Railroad with me? Would you be there at my side?
please say something. I want to start over. I know very well what I've done to you. You may be at fault yourself, but what I did was is unacceptable. But what I did was a consequence of my overpowering love for you. I swear it. Why? Why do you still not answer me? Say something. Anything. Please. Please. Can you hear me in there? Can't you? You can hear me in there, can't you? If you don't want to, you can just say no. If you do reject me, I'll set you free. I won't hurt you, I promise. The door is not locked. Who opened it? Hello? A human s a humid spring breeze brush through brush against his cheeks. The drawn lace curtains appear to glow in the gentle moonlight. Moonlight is nighttime. The white haired girl was not in her room. Where where have you gone? Stupefied. Stupefied, he glanced about his wife's chambers. To my eyes, the neatly organized room appeared no different than any other day. But to his eyes, it was a, it was pale and hollow. For the ones who was supposed to be there, for the one who was supposed to be there, who was supposed to be waiting for him, was not present. He could not hear a voice anywhere in the shed. In its place echoed a dry rustling, a sad, pitiful, empty whisper of a noise. It came from the lone object left abandoned atop her desk. The Finnascoscope. It was the one present Jacob had ever given the white-haired girl. A toy made, a toy made of paper. How did she get it? Unless she take it with her when she, he, he locked her in. When spun and viewed in a mirror, it created the illusion of a man and a woman dancing. You, you still had this. That's ridiculous. I assume you had thrown it out. The white-haired girl had evidently made a considerable use of the finiscope. The paper was visibly worn and tattered, warped in places, and had even begun to yellow. It spun slowly in the wind, in the wind, rustling and rustling and rustling, spinning in an endless reminder of the day, the year before. Though there was no longer anyone around to look through it. Why? But I, you were with other men. Why would you keep something I gave you? So, it's so worn. Why? A letter. Beneath the ever-rotating finiscope lay a single sheet of paper. As if drawn to it, he scanned the contents of the parchment. It was a letter addressed to Carlo, Carlo Mio Jacob. The salutation written in his native language translated as follow. My beloved Jacob. Did the fruits of your dreams turn out as you hoped? I'm sure it was wonderful and impressively fast. A train that could travel across a continent as large as this like something out of a story. Why is the letters kind of... I wish I could have been there to see it. I'm sure it would have been quite pleasant, like the day you gave me the Phoenix wheel. Am I being presumptuous? Yeah, there's something wrong with the lettering. The wording, the words are too space. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought I would keep waiting for you, forever. No matter how much you hated or ignored me. But I made up my mind, so I'm sorry. I decided I would wait for you until the railroad was complete. Foolishly, I thought that you might invite me to the opening ceremony. But it seems I'm not good enough for you. I'm going to take my leave of your house. 
So you needn't concern yourself with me any longer. However, I do have one request. Please do not forget about all the letters I wrote. Ha <laughs> ha, you gotta expose Maria. Think back on them from time to time. Do not burn them all, for they contain my thoughts, my feelings, my words, a record of my love for you. Remember, when you can, that I was always watching you. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble writing. My ears are ringing. There's a voice whispering to me calling me a witch. Maybe it's your voice. My vision is blurred. I'm not even sure what is going through my mind. I'm sorry, this was all. I was, in, I was unable to write for you. I'm truly sorry. I'll leave the Finscus wheel behind. It was my dearest treasure. Farewell. I loved you. The 5th of the 8th, AD 69. What? What? What the hell is this? He visibly, he was visibly rattled. And unsurprisingly so. The mention of the transcontinental railroad opening ceremony, the letters she had written, her dearest treasure, her profession of love for him, and above all, the mangled texts that appeared to have been written by someone not entirely in the right mind. Everything about it served to amplify his befundament. You waited for me. How can that be? The joining ceremony is tomorrow. It hasn't happened yet. Why? Why did you have to leave then? I'm here. I came for you, just as I planned. The ceremony is on the tent. A second later, Jacob grabs gas. The date written on the letter was the day prior, May the 8th. Originally, the ceremony was planned to be held on May the 8th. However, due to bad weather and labor dispute, it has been postponed for two days. This can't be. I made sure you were informed. I had Maria. Maria, yeah, you're now fucking realizing. The madam is having an affair. Maria, no, you couldn't. The scattered fragments of memory began coming together in his mind. Maria, wa Maria was the only one who had informed him of his wife's supposed unfaithfulness. And though the letters had not been addressed to him, thinking back on it, they had all been about him. One letter she had mentioned treasuring a gift. Jacob had assumed he meant it meant a gift from another man. But in fact, she had been referring to this fancy scope sitting atop her desk, spinning in the wind. At long, long last, he finally made that connection. Finally. <laughs> and at the same time, he realized that the only person who could have altered the letters was someone they both trusted, Maria. Never. She never even once betrayed me. She was not unfaithful at all. She waited unwaverly for me, and I, and I, and I, refused to believe her. I caused the pain again and again, but his realization came far too late. The white haired girl's spirit has broken, and she was no longer at the mansion. She has caught on to Maria, Maria's machinations sooner. Things would if he had caught on to Maria, Maria's machination sooner, things would not have turned out the way they had. But he was much too late. Maria! Why? Why would he have done this? Clench clenching the letter from his wife, Jacob stormed out of the shed in search of Maria. You're gonna get fucked now, Maria. You're gonna get everything that's coming to you now. But Maria was not in her assigned room. Don't tell me she ran away. Rima signed to her. No. Where are you? Where have you gone? Maria! Several maids were... Several, several maids were roused from their slumber by the racket, but no one had, 
had the courage to speak up as the master of the house was frantically charging through the halls. Eventually he arrived at his own chamber. He was certain that he had closed the door before leaving, but now a sliver of light shone through the gap between it and the frame. From within the room, he thought he could sense someone's presence. When he opened the door, he saw comfortably perched upon his own chair a woman named Maria. I've been waiting, Jacob. Yeah, like a fucking villain. Like a fucking villain. The most villainous thing I've seen. Well, not really. I was gonna say the most villainous thing I've seen in this entire game, but no. Nice room you got here. Th though I guess that's only natural, you being the man of the house and all. All these fancy furnishings. You do know this stuff is too good for you, right? And then me. I get that burned little maid's room. Drives me up a ball. So hey, Jacob. Clear the air with your little, little lady yet. Maria. Ah, I love that look on your face. I'm guessing you didn't make things better then. You know good and well that she not even that she's not even here anymore. Well, yeah, but I still want to hear you say it, you know. I want to hear it from your own mouth that you couldn't keep a leash on your woman, so you lock her up, drove her mad, broke her down, and then she ran away from you. ha 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 fuck you. Go on, say something. Climb back on your high horse and start shouting like you always do. Why, Maria? Why would you do this? Why? You want to... Why do you think? Oh god. Because I fucking despise you. I've been trying to figure out how I wanted to end things, but then they just fell apart on their own. The fates are smiling down upon me, I guess. Nonsense. She was waiting for me until the day of the joining ceremony. I was going to see her on that day. You knew the ceremony has been postponed. That's what you get for putting it all in my hands. For thinking I am the only one on your side. What did you think I'd just tell her like a good little maid? Not a chance in hell. I mean, talk about some fantastic news. Both You both picked the same day, but you got the wrong... But you, you got the dates different. Absolutely perfect. Maria, is that how you always felt? How long have you held this grudge against me? How long? How long? <laughs> how goddamn dense can you be? Must be nice living in your little fantasy fantasy world, Jacob. And this is the next. And this is the next capo. Fem, I forgot how to pronounce that. Capofenilia. Oh my God, my sides. You're old. You've always you've always hated me. At the very least, I fucking load you since. Since the minute we had our reunion. At first I did try to convince myself you had your reasons. Didn't make it feel any less unfair though. You had all your money and all your power. And everything else you stole from me. And then you go and get hitched to this pretty little lady. Oh, don't try to act like you're the victim here. This is all on you. Do you have any idea how I felt? Fallen from grace, made to, made your goddamn maid, and having to suck up to you. Do you have any idea how infuriating that was? Or did you think I didn't sh know anything? Or did you think I didn't suspect anything? If you did, then you got your head way up in the clouds. 
So you were motivated by your grudges against my family, the Berzatis. Precisely. That exactly it. Your father wanted so badly to be the Kappa Familia, wanted so badly to be in power, that he murdered my dad and grandpa. And they... And they say it was a car cartridge accident. Carriage accident. But the ground was all torn to hell where it happened. You want to tell me what kind of cartridge accident causes it to explode? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, car... It, it, those old vehicles, okay. Cartridge, oh. Carry it, it's... Uh, horses, okay. As soon as my dad and grandpa died, your dad took over as a Kappa Familia. The balance of power in the factions began to change. My family and anyone with ties to the Campanellas were either exterminated or exiled. The Barzites took control of the city. My grandpa's, my grandpa Costa became your Costa. No one in their right mind would have the night would be naive enough to think that the Berzatis didn't have a hand in that. The great Capanelia family bitten by their pet dog. Except the dog had rabies. And as a result, in time, that lush historic land will wither away and die. My dad and grandpa buried in that dried up earth are screaming in their graves even now. You can't prove me wrong, can you, Jacob? And now, first in line to be the next Kappa Familia is you, his son. Naturally. Feels pretty good, don't it? Slaughtering my family. Leaving us to swallow in the mud. While you live here like a fucking king. Because of what your family did, I don't have a home to go back to anymore. No house, no prestige, I have nothing left. That's a god, and that's goddamn outrageous. The, Cap of the Campanellas are supposed to run that city. But instead, you filthy bazardies curs are crawling over it like some, ki some kind of infestation. I am the legitimate Campanella. But I am stuck being your goddamn maid. If I hadn't been born a woman, I could have become the Kappa Familia after my dad and grandpa died. But wait, 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 that was going to, wait. Kappa Familia after my dad and had grandpa, dad and grandpa died, but because I am a woman, I couldn't, I couldn't retell it. I just had to sit on my hands and watch the tragedy unfold. It was absolutely miserable. So I had to make you suffer as well. I had to make you as... No, I had to make you twice as miserable as I was. You had no reason to hate anyone but me. Why did you make her a part of this? Did you have some to sort of grudge against her too? No particularly, I actually rather liked the madam. Sweet, pretty, kind-hearted, timid, and fragile. Trusted every word I said. A splendid little toy. You thought of her as your toy. Now, now. Can you really call me out for that? You can't. You have no rights. You never cared one bit about anyone else. They all were footstools for you. To you. It's a little too late to find yourself a sense of morality. This whole thing, it could have been avoided if you two just had a single conversation. You stopped them. But instead, the both of you come crawling to me saying you're my only ally, Maria. How dense can you be? Of course, I thought you were my only I thought you were my ally. I trusted you, as I'm sure she did too. Then you should get your eyes examined because you can't see a damn thing. Maria. Oh my god, it was beautiful. The way you two blindly trust me creating your own misunderstandings and cause your own pain. How could you ever seem to get on the same page? Watching it all fall apart. Maria. 
Is that everything? The extent of your grudge and all you did. Ah, uh, yep. That's everything. All that l that's left is for me to kill you. Holy shit, she's mad. Oh, still now, I wouldn't want to miss. Maria, you. Does that will pass me nothing to you? Was that. Oh, just an empty promise. How could it. How could it? When you remember it so clearly. Fine, I explain for our little romantic boy. Bad grown ups will even take advantage of good memories. Those look epic, though. Not gonna lie. Take it of good memories. It's time I finally returned this to you, Jacob. That cartridge you gave me packed with your disgusting sentimentality. Ah. Ah. Oh wait, they did a laugh track. I didn't need to do that. Killing you ain't the end though. All you Bazzati's curse. I sent every last one of you straight to hell. My revenge has just begun. Even if... Even if you had been a man, you wouldn't have been a suitable ca Kappa fa Familia. You should have aimed between my eyes, Maria. Jacob! Oh, damn, he sh He had a gun? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, why? Bec you know damn why. Why? You know damn why. You got shot in the head. You shouldn't be able to think. In a panic, I pulled the trigger, and from the barrel, a bullet went flying. Quite literally right between her eyes. Would anyone ever believe me? If I said this wasn't how I wanted things to turn out. Wait, what? The rain just keeps... Keeps on coming. I wonder if we would be able to go home today. Hey, Jacobino! Say something, you little wuss. Be, be quiet. You're gonna give me a headache. The lightning is way louder than me. Eek. Heck. Ah, you jump like you jump, Jacobino. You're such you're such a baby. Jump too, and stop calling me that. Don't be scared, don't cry. I'm not crying. Your eyes are damp too. I'm not crying at not at all, not one bit. Liar. <laughs> There's no end to this rain, is there? I'm fine if it doesn't stop. There's nothing at home for me. You don't want to go home. Your privates don't get along, huh? That's nothing to do with it. Liar. You got a good Everyone loves their grandpa. Whenever anyone needs something, they come to him. Now there is a great man. Uh, how did my grandpa become a part of us? Oh, no reason. Not everyone likes him. He gets just as much hate as love. Grandpa is not really a model citizen. He's mostly just shrewd. Are you jealous? I'm not. My old man is, though... Uh, is he now? Wait, what? My old man is... Though, yeah. How is he now? Well, your dad got his good points too, I think. Like, I don't know, he seems like the kind of man who can accomplish big things. Though he seems a lot stricter than my grandpa. Oh come on now. Oh come on, I don't get you. 
What are you clamming up for? No reason. If you don't want to go home, then how about we go somewhere far away from here? Huh? Let's just stop running and let's get out of here. Head up to the capital, find some work. We can make it work, just the two of us. Oh, and we could bring Nero, of course. If we could, that would be nice. Break free of the city and its outdated traditions. Head somewhere bigger, more forward thinking. If only it, it were possible. It's alright, Maria. I know you were just joking. We wouldn't be able to find work anyways. If the two of us ran off, we would be starving in a month. You have to be blind not to see that. Right. Let's go home once the rain lets up. Yeah, once it does. But until then, hmm. I know, let's sing. Sing even louder than the lightning. Then maybe you will stop crying, Jacopino. I'm not crying. Uh, come on, let's sing. La 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 Listen to me, Jacob. My actions were justified. I did what I did for the betterment of this city, this land. It's gonna wither away. The Campanellas are too conservative. Under their control, this country will atrophy. The progress will continue to lose steam. If we don't push forward, we will fall further and further behind. Before long, you will be made the next Capa Familia. But until that day, you will cross over to the New World, and establish the Coast Gadir. Unify us, bolster us, make us strong. I'll handle things back here. I won't let the Cap Capanels try and strike back. What? You want Maria to? It's dangerous to keep a Capanella so close by. She has to be taken care of. If you insist, but do not let your guard down. Betrayal is a constant companion in this world. I'm giving you my revolver. Oh, that's where you get a gun. Keep it on you at all times. Glory everlasting upon our blood. Upon this earth. The best I can give you is a job as my maid. If I show you any more obvious, obviously professional, professional professional treatment, permanent treatment, the Berzatis are liable to step in. Money, power, respect, and enough authority to not take orders from anyone. I thought that if I could obtain all that. I will be able to give you your freedom. And her as well. I wanted to give you both comfortable lives. But none of that got through to either of you. Oh, he's dying. Everything is slipping through my fingers. Her love, my friendship with Maria. Both of their smiles. Master, master! Wh what was that sound? Eek, so much blood! Uh, uh, Maria, wh what happened this time? You keep getting stuck witnessing the worst things. What? Um, what? Call a doctor. Someone with tight lips. Do not call the police. Don't take, don't make a scene, got it? If so, then go. Yes, sir. Right, not everything has slipped from my grasp. 
My money and influence are all that's left. Is that what you wanted though, is it not? You sought money and power now. Aren't you going to go? Yes, I will. But first, I would like to ask you something. What do you intend to do from here? What am I going to do? Exactly the same as before. There is but one thing for me to do. I see. Will you eventually find solace in your riches? The way I see it, money and power can be your ally, but they can also become your enemy in the blink of an eye. If you do not push them into the word, into if you do not put them into words, your feelings will never make it true to anyone. For unlike money, humans are not measurable by their appearance. He failed to communicate to anyone what he held within his breast. He was chained down by his place in society, his pride, his relationships, and his own heart. At some point, he found himself in a position where he had no longer he was no longer able to speak his mind. After enough time, he likely forgot how to be a gen how to be genuine at all. Or perhaps someone like him simply would not even if they knew how. In any event, there are many things in this world that cannot be communicated without being put into words. How sad that his tale should end without him expressing how he truly felt. How hard it must have been it must have been to ever to never clear up his misunderstandings. After Jacob's confrontation with Maria, the Pacific Railroad was completed as scheduled. Celebratory cheers shook the new world as the last spike was driven into the rails. Jacob, however, could not even manage a smile, listening to the telegraph. And I'm sure you can take a guess as to why. The people who with whom he wished to share the moment were not there. Shortly following her death, Jacob held a private funeral for Maria. Then he commenced a search for the white-haired girl, but he did not do so alone. He hired others to help, everything in his power to find her, tirelessly searching for many, many years. However, he never was able to locate her, and he spent the remainder of his life alone. Money, power, renown, servants. The world around him was always quite lively, but solitude was his only companion. He waited and he waited and he waited for the white-haired girl to return. The years crawled by and with no family or loved ones at his side to care for him in his old age, he died alone. And the doors close.